preparing to live stream. Okay. Okay, well, we got that going. Uh, now I just need to get the address and post it. So if anybody wants to watch. To do, to do, to do, to do. What is the address? Oh, share. There's a share option. Oh, wait a minute. What's that? Hold on. Well, I'm not sure how to do this. I could enlarge this. Maybe we might. Oh, there we go. That gives it to me. The address will post it. Copy. So I'm going to go um, post this on Facebook and then we will start this thing out. Let's see here. Um, I'll One more share, just a minute, sorry. I have a question for everybody while you're doing that. Oh, hey, go ahead, somebody. Um, what is, I don't have a Dremel. And I, when I take pictures of my feet, they don't look as pretty as everybody that has a Dremel. So what is a not a good one to get? And what is the best one to get? But not like break the bank. Um, do you have a Harbor Freight there where you're at? Nope. Are you in Canada? I am. Okay. Didn't you just tell me that? Because I'm not sure who's talking there. Oh, it's Brandy. Brandy. Yeah. Um, well, um, they have different kinds at, at, well, do you have a Walmart? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They should have different ones, like a heart. They have, Walmart has their own tool brands, kind of. They got, yeah. heart, which is the medium quality. And then they got uh, whatever the one that it's red, that's a little better quality. And I would, I would try there. Okay. I just didn't know if you guys had one that you specifically really liked or ones that don't well, really work and well, great. just regular Dremel, you know, I'll tell you what doesn't work are those Ren things, W-R-E-N or whatever. They got all kinds of little tools. Um, they don't work. Uh, they don't have the strength, but a regular Dremel or just a regular Dremel, are, okay. they're not that expensive. No, I've seen some on Facebook Marketplace, but then there's the different, there's like the 100 version or the blah, blah version. Yeah, so. get, get, you know, um, I'm not an expert in those for okay. sure. I've got like two or three different kinds that I try out, you know. Um, uh, mostly I use a grinder, you know, a small grinder. Um, but those can be kind of, well, uh, if you can find a, even a four inch grinder anymore, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> they make them all in four and a half inches now, and that's like too big. But I had a four inch grinder that I could fit a three inch disc on, which was just about right. And then I made, I took an electric cord and I put a dimmer switch on it to make it variable speed. So I could learn to use it better. And that okay. works real good. Um, um, I, I'll work on getting some information together on that stuff. 
Uh, but yeah, it's nice to be able to kind of trim things up and sand things up and make them look a little nicer, you know. Um, see, now they it. had this. Uh, and uh, sorry, Linda. Oh, go ahead. Just to let you know, being in Canada, Walmart, United States, Walmart, Canada, Walmart in the United States has so many more options. Walmart okay. in Canada doesn't always carry the same product. Oh, okay. But Canadian Tire is pretty good. You you can find some reasonably cheap Dremels and stuff at Canadian Tire. Okay. Oh, okay. Great. Thanks for that information. I I use the little um, one of the smaller Dremels that's actually uh, rechargeable, so that you don't have to plug it in, so you're not you don't have cords all around. And yep. that works pretty good. Great. That's great. Yeah, and know. it's really like maybe a hundred bucks, maybe less, 79, something like that. That's not too bad. Thanks. And it's USB chargeable. It works pretty good, actually. That's awesome. Not a lot of vibration. I bought the Proxon too, mm -hmm. but I find that it's really noisy. Yeah. And, it, and my old horse is okay with anything. But some of the younger ones, they're not so happy with that and, it, and the <laughs> grinding feel. So just try it out really well on your horse before you, you know, just be aware they might might not be happy with it. <laughs> oh, okay, let's see. Okay, well, that's great. Yeah, anybody that has any information on any of that stuff, please share. Um, also okay. in Canada, go on Kijiji. I'm not sure if it's the States. Go on Kijiji. A lot of people are selling their secondhand stuff on there pretty cheap. Yeah, find tools, you know. I bought, see, I bought, they have these little miniature battery operated uh, mini grinders all over the place, all over eBay and Amazon and everything, you know, and they're just got a little old battery in them. Um, I used it. Uh, but they, they're brushless and they have no power at all. And if you press very hard, they just stop. Yeah. And I bought the work series with all the big battery oh, batteries, expensive. Yeah. And yeah. Then as soon as you put any sort of, and I know not much pressure, just light pressure. Yeah. Shuts them down. Yep. Total yeah. waste of money. Yeah. A waste, huh? Yeah. I got, I have one of their Dremels and it's yeah. junk. Yeah. Too bad, too, because that could have been really, really handy, especially yeah, their probably. little grinder, you know. Yeah. OK, so um, let me see if uh, if you guys have anything else to talk about for a minute, uh, would you? Because I need to kind of contact this girl and see if it's OK if I do an evaluation on her horse's feet. And um, I'm really doing more of an intervention. You know what I mean? um an intervention uh because you can really see that her horse's feet are going south you know and she's been told that her horse has a great digital cushion and all this and that is not what is happening in these pictures you know what happens is when when you trim the heels out of these horses and you reduce the size of the hoof capsule it starts to compress that foot well, it, it's the foot is going to be the foot size, and so when you're bending that cartilage and that 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 digital cushion fat is kind of being squeezed out the back and stuff, they think this is building up the digital cushion. When in reality, you're just squeezing the foot out of the capsule and making it look, you know, like what are those squeeze balls that you can squeeze and they bubble out the sides? Anybody know, is it a stress ball? Like it's like made out of some sort of rubbery stuff and you squeeze them. Like I could squeeze up my hand and it'll stays, it stays, you know, cause it's got a covering. But when you squeeze it, uh, I could squeeze it totally shut in the and part of it will come out the top of my hand, the other out the bottom. Does anybody know what those are? Kids play with them. Yeah, um, they're, stress they're, they're stress balls. Is that my what it is? Tons of them. They stress call ball. Them squishies or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
squishies or squishies, whatever. Squishy, stress. <laughs> oh, I'm looking it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Squishy stress ball. I need to get one of these. I need to get some of these so that uh, I can ex show here. Let me put this up here. Just a second here. Okay. I don't want your coupon. Let's see. New share. Here we go. Okay. So the foot, like the stress ball here, has a certain shape, right? But the smaller, the more you, you trim that capsule out of the foot and make it smaller, well, the inner foot doesn't change its size. It's got to go somewhere. So it starts, you know, pushing up out the back. And so they think this is, is the digital cushion developing. That's what they think. That's what they've been led to believe and think and stuff like that. And so anyway, that's what, if you look at these feet, that's what they're thinking when actually the whole foot's just being compressed and you can see uh, severe inflammation taking place and stuff like that. So anyway, see, we can use all this stuff for uh, uh, analogies, you know. Um, I'm going to go again. We're going to start out with taking a look at the inner foot. Just a minute here. Find the pictures. So we remember um, what it is we're really dealing with. We'll come up here. Just a minute. New share. So this is just a few pictures that I have of inner feet, you know, nothing uh, complete by any means, but always remembering the inner foot of the horse is the true, true, true foot of the horse. See, like this foot here. Oh, okay. So this paint here, he lived in this pasture is about 40 acres and, um, he went blind and the girl that owned him, she went into the Navy and so her elderly parents had him. So he had to be put down. And so I got his feet and these were his feet. This is what they look like. He's trimmed maybe three times in his life. A little bit. She would knock off an edge here and there and she's by no means do anything about what she's doing. So she didn't hardly cut anything off. And mm -hmm. so... I yeah. think we don't, I just see multiple pictures. Is oh, that... darn. Thank you. I'm thank so you. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, no, no, you. don't be sorry <laughs> because this happens to me a lot. Well, okay. Up, you know. There we go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks. So speak up, people. <laughs> okay. I need all the help I can get. All right. So this paint horse that I just told you about, big, good looking paint horse, too. I mean, good boned everything, but he was going blind. And so uh, uh, they, they put him down and uh, they allowed me to have his feet. And look at the good foot he had for never being trimmed and living in this pasture. You know, I mean, there were some few issues here and there, but really he had exceptional feet that he took care of himself. Better than if somebody would have been trimming the heels out of him, you know. And so we always want to start off with remembering that the horse has an inner foot and it's covered with skin. See, now, did I skin this horse? No. So this is skin, regular skin with the hair removed. And this is the foot. It's also skin with the capsule removed. So hair is made out of keratin and the capsule and the periopal and everything on there is made out of keratin, just like feathers are made out of keratin, horns are made out of keratin. Uh, see, keratin forms different substances, different things on the body. But this is skin that grows the hair. This is the skin that grows the hoof wall. This is the skin that adheres the capsule to the hoof wall, the lamina. 
And then right here is the soul corium that grows the soul. It's all corium, but it's skin. They just call it skin because they just call it corium because it grows a hoof capsule, but it's all skin because I skinned it and it will all turn into leather. The skin up here, if you were to skin the skin off the leg and tan it, turns into leather. The skin down here turns into leather. Or if you just let it dry, the whole thing turns into rawhide. And so that's how we know that this is skin. And so here's the thing. Okay, the foot, okay, is covered with skin, but the foot, the foot, let me uh, do an annotate here. Maybe I seem to have lost my thing. Uh, to do, to do, to do, annotate. Okay, so underneath in here, Okay, well, it's not annotating. Hold on. There, there we go. Just a second. So we always have to come back to the foundation, which is the basic foot first, covered with skin without, you know, uh, thinking about the parts, but we have to know where is that foot. So this foot, it isn't just under here. Okay, this foot extends up to here. This is the whole foot right here, this whole thing. And so, and so your foot is under this part of the skin here, your cartilage is in your foot and a lot of your digital cushion is up in here. And, uh, when you take just the foot off, the small pastern bone, short pastern bone, P2, which is right here, okay, it's jointed into the coffin bone in here. So it's kind of, kind of in the center of the foot, about into here, into the coffin bone. But your whole foot is this whole, whole thing here. And so we see that part of the foot grows, has hair on it because the hair grows right up here and the hoof capsule starts growing, growing here and down. So we always have to remember that it's this whole foot, this cartilage up here is just as much a part of the foot as your heel in the back of your, your heel is of your foot. Well, this would be like, like your ankle. This would be like, like your heel. This whole deal would be like your heel. You know, um, your heel just isn't under here, you know. There's the back of your heel as well. Um, and I always like to compare it to our feet because we have a foot that is covered with skin and is one unit and works as one unit, even though it is composed of there's bones in there and, and tendons and ligaments and there's muscle. And there's, guess what? There's digital cushion in your foot too fatty pads in your toes and in your heel. Um, but if it wasn't one unit and covered with skin, all those parts wouldn't function correctly together. And so we always have to remember, this is the foot of the horse right here. This is permanent. This over here should grow to fit the foot and if the heels are worn or trimmed correctly it supports and stabilizes the whole back of the foot because two-thirds literally two-thirds of your foot is soft cartilage and fat one-third is coffin bone the two-thirds of the cartilage and fat can be moved about as easy maybe a little harder but as your nose or your ear takes a little more pressure, but that's about the extent of it.
Um, with all the pressure that a horse exerts, it can easily move that around. That's why it needs a specific formulation. The back of that foot needs a heel buttress, solid piece, okay, that supports the back of the foot and the frog stay between the bulbs to stabilize this foot so that this hairline will stay at a specific angle to support the foot so that uh, internally the lamina on the inside of the capsule that's connected to the lamina here okay they all have to be in alignment right here they're connected together and so all these have to be in a specific alignment parallel alignment like so as soon as you go trimming a heel too low like this it changes all these well it changes the hairline down like that and then it changes the angle of all these horn tubules and lamina to go like this but guess what the foot doesn't want to change that alignment do you understand the foot wants to be supported in a specific fashion period because this is its foot this is its anatomy and so you go trimming the heels down or the horse wears them down well then that pulls his his foot down like so well this is cartilage and fat cartilage and fat likes to be where cartilage and fat wants to be i mean uh you know i can put on <laughs> revealing secrets i can put on one of them stretchy things remember when youtube and everything they were always advertising those stretchy things you could put all your on your body to make your fat look like it had curves instead of Bang. rolls what Bang. yeah and uh uh anyway but guess what as soon as i take that off it all goes back to the same place right so same thing with my ear i can bend it down but it's wanting to go back up i can push my nose over the side of my face and cut off my breathing halfway um but as soon as i release my nose it wants to go up well when you trim the heels down on these horses and you change all the angles of these horn tubules and you pull this foot that is cartilage and filled with fat down okay well you're pulling this down you're crushing your heels but guess what that foot wants to stay up period all right so if you've lessened the amount of wall that stabilizes here that foot as we have found it's going to pull up anyway one way or another okay and so a lot of times what well sometimes it won't in a dry climate sometimes you can get this to just stay down and crush crush all your heels here so that you got that shape see see how that would change that that shape there you can get this all to just stay down in a dry climate, but in a wetter climate where it loosens up this periopal, see this white hair? That periopal can get super thick. And when it dries, it can bind and hold that foot down there. Um, but when it gets wet, then it releases the foot and the foot will rise again. Okay. And a lot of times it's just going to do it anyway. And what happens then is when it pulls up, because it can't help but pull up, that is the way it's made. It's supposed to stand like this. It's supposed to have, we use a different color, it's supposed to have a hairline at this angle. Okay. Uh, not down like that at this angle. Why? Because look where the coronary band is. See, they we, they do this deal where they make a pe plexiglass thing. I tried it, so I know. See, all this stuff I have tried. Plexiglass 
little piece of plexiglass like so and you draw angles well how did we do that you draw angles on it like this 30 degrees and you put that plexiglass up to the side of your horse's foot here and you're looking at the hairline and uh they, they say it's supposed to have a 30 degree hairline to make his coffin bone ground parallel which they're not and um so then you come in there and you just keep trimming those heels down till you have a 30 degree hairline see like so i did that i tried that I tried a little while. I didn't really like it. I mean, you really got to trim the heels out of these horses to get that, you know. I destroyed the Linda like this. Yeah. Plexiglass. Yep. And uh, let me undo this here. Oh, well, that's all right. We'll leave it there. So this, the horse doesn't have a 30 degree hairline. No horse has a 30 degree hairline. And if you find find one it means they've worn their heels out and the per they've crushed their heels see this heel here right here they've crushed the heel um down and forward and then the periopal is just binding that foot together to keep it from falling apart now what happens let me undo all this here now you look at this foot this foot is in pretty good alignment, you know, uh, right here, the horn tubules and the lamina, you see that in alignment. But if I were to trim the heels out of this horse, there's another thing that goes on. When you change the hair, when you change cutting the heel out of this capsule, takes the hairline from here to here and it it takes this and it tries to pull it down it pulls it down and it crushes it but there's another thing that goes on here and that is let me undo here and that is see as long as these are in basic alignment right here together like say here let's do it this way clear um we'll do we'll do green here we're doing the lamina okay right to there because then you got the soul that starts here and let's say uh i'm gonna guess it about here no wait wait clear i don't want to clear all drawing there we go let me do the other one in a different color Okay, we'll do it in blue. Okay, let's say these are connected together here internally, the lamina. This is the inner lamina of the capsule. So this here represents the lamina that's connected right there to the capsule. Okay, and the green is the internal lamina the sensitive lamina of the foot they are connected and dovetailed together and <clears throat> the sensitive lamina is permanent okay that's on the horse that's part of the horse that's a type of skin it's also called corium um and that is permanent but the insensitive lamina leaf that is it that is connected to that in a dovetail fashion and each piece on here has its individual part of the hoof capsule called the insensitive lamina why is it called insensitive lamina because it's hoof it's hoof it's part of the hoof wall and so so these two must be parallel to be in weight weight bearing unity you see <clears throat> the capsule must fit and support the foot in the shape that the foot actually is now what hoof distortion does 
because two thirds of this foot is soft cartilage and fat, as the heels are overworn, or even if they're in a situation where they get too long, um, it can deform the capsule. Well, that has a direct impact on the foot since the foot is two thirds soft cartilage and fat. Um, if you trim the heels out, it pulls this soft cartilage and fat down and crushes the heels. If they get too long and collapse forward, it could do it could do the same thing. See, it gets long and then the weight on the back of the foot and the whole thing collapses forward. Well, what happens then? It pulls this down like so. And this cartilage is meant to be a specific shape and it's meant to be in a specific location, not down here, not rounded. Um, things like that. So, uh, all right. So, so I come along or the horse, again, this can happen if the horse wears his heels just as much as if I trim them out over time. It will change the weight bearing equilibrium between the capsule, capsule and the foot. See, right now, we could, this foot could be put in the capsule. and We've got almost perfect weight-bearing equilibrium. And uh, in other words, they're pulling together. They're yoked together, and they're pulling together. But as soon as the angle of the heel becomes something it was not meant to be, it creates a situation where they start to pull apart. There is constant pressure on them pulling apart. And I mean, uh, the horses, their feet and everything, they adapt to quite a degree. But adaption is not, adaption is, is for survival. Adaption is not for, for, oh, uh, what's a word I'm looking for? Like when, when, okay, so you have a life where you just survive. But then you have uh, a more abundant life, you know, where you function wonderfully and everything's great. You thrive. What'd you say? Thrive. I still didn't get it. Thrive. It means you do really, really well. You thrive. Oh, thrive. I was missing the TH part. You Sorry. thrive. Right. Right. So... So if the, everything is in alignment and weight bearing unity and good support in the back of the foot, the horse thrives, you know, um, but if it's a matter of he has to adapt to constant hoof distortion, uh, that's just survive, you know, and it's good that he survives. We want that for sure. But we want our horse to thrive, you know. And so what happens is when I lower the heels, let's see how to explain it. It starts this process. Um, we'll do it on another deal here. Let's see. Okay, so so again, here's the inner or here's the inner lamina of the hoof capsule. And uh, let's see how, how I would do this, how to explain what happens here. Just a second. Uh, let me undo that. Uh, to -do, to -do. Redo, undo. Let's do it this way. Okay, so this is the inner of the hoof capsule right here. As soon as you lower the heels, um, it sets them at a different angle forward. So they are pulling forward all all of the lamina is now pulling forward. At the same time, since you have lowered, uh, forced a lower heel on the horse and pulled all this cartilage down, the horse wants to stand up. And so at the same time, what's going on is, let's see, how could I, how could I explain this? Okay, this lamina here, this one here is pulling forward. Wait I'm a minute. Good. I'm doing the wrong color. Hold on. 
let's see. Okay. So I just don't the well, lamina. Uh oh, attended. somebody's not muted. Yeah. <laughs> well, in case somebody goes, you know, we have to find this person and mute them just a second. Uh, da -da -da -da. I'll hit him before I leave. That's fine. No rush. Anybody? Oh, it's it's okay. Maria. Sorry. Gotta oh, mute sorry. Sure. It's okay. It's okay. We're just gonna mute ya. Oh, you. Oh, there we go. Um. Okay. And let me undo this here. Um, there we go. Okay. So to get back to where we were. Again, these are supposed to be in weight bearing unity. The green is the internal lamina on the foot that's permanent. That's going to be on the foot no matter what. The blue is the internal lamina of the hoof capsule that attaches, it's supposed to attach in parallel fashion to each lamina of the inner foot, but it grows off. Okay, it grows off. It's not permanent. And uh, so when you over lower the heels or the horse wears the heels down, it sets the lamina on the hoof capsule at a different angle, which is no longer parallel to the internal lamina. And so I've represented it there by that blue line. Okay, but what this foot wants to be where this foot now it might pull it somewhat this way there's pressure pulling it this way but guess where it wants to be it wants to be here so what happens is uh this lamina is now pulling the opposite direction it's pulling away from this in the opposite direction and what's what you actually have is the mechanical force of like when I remove a hoof capsule, I pull it off just off the back of the foot, just like a shoe. And so the mechanical force that is taking place is that without horse standing, walking, jogging, running, no matter what, the mechanical force taking place is as if you are pulling the foot out of the capsule. And so then, uh, since the horse is built to survive if he's wearing his own heels out and, and things like that because of a drought or famine and he's got to walk, you know, 20 miles a day or whatever. So then what goes to happen is this periopal starts to multiply and get thicker to try and hold the capsule on the foot so the horse can survive and bind the foot in there. And another thing that happens is uh, when the heels get worn out here, okay, and it's, it's pulling all this down. Now I forgot what I was gonna say. Okay, you notice if I take the heel off here, I have less mass right in here, right in this area, right? There's less, less here, this area. So when this foot that is being pulled down then wants to pull back up, what it will do is as that foot is stretching back up to where it wants to be, because it doesn't want, it doesn't want the hairline and everything to be down here it, because this is its shape. And so as it's pulling up, it takes this piece of hoof wall here and it just wraps it around behind and under. And remember, I've shown you in the past here, I'll have to see if I can find that, where the horse, it, the horse will make his own heel. You trim the heel out and people come back and say, wow, the heels grew. No, the heels didn't grow. The foot pull the sidewall around. Look, if I pull, where is it here? Let me use this. If I take this area here, let's just make us a different kind of hoof here. 
I've made, I've done this. Of course, you know, they come in short in the toe, right? Okay, so here's my hoof capsule. It's supposed to have this on it. It's pulled the whole foot down. The foot is pulling back up. And so it takes this area in here, right in here, and it starts to pull it around behind itself like this. So it's pulled it around. So I may be looking at the side of it. And originally, what I pulled and I thought my had my good wild horse looking hoof, okay, with the 30 degree hairline here. But I come back in a few days and by George, he's grown heel. Looky there. See, because it was only this long. But now my heel is this long. Wow. He sure grows heel fast. No, he didn't grow any, grow it. He pulled it around and wrapped it inside. And what you're looking at is sidewall here. And see, even being able to explain this all now, um, I'm understanding more about it. Uh, about what was happening when I was really trimming the heels out of my horse and I kept thinking that he was just I would come out and he was like growing heel magically growing heel and so I just take it off again and take it off again because what had happened is uh he was pulling the back of his foot around so that he could stand up again and why is that because they think to do this. No, this is totally 100% mechanical forces at work. And so um, let's look at this picture where this horse actually, and now we, uh, we know uh, it's like uh, when I talk about uh, false heels that are a combination of sidewall and bar. You know, and obviously also whatever they pull around, you know, this is taking the place of the heel buttress. You've trimmed the heel buttress out. And so this is all taking the place of it. So did I explain that pretty good? Does did people kind of understand very what I'm well, saying? Very well. Awesome. Fantastic. Yes. Great. Okay. Okay. Great. Um. I want us to get so we really, really, really understand what's going on because, because, you know, the foot is always making a false version of itself and we don't even know what's happening. You know, I did this to my pony. I did this to my gelding. I did this to my pony and a number of other horses I trimmed. Um, and, but especially to my pony. Uh, I had no idea this was going on. You don't even know what's happening. You know, you just notice that the toe starts to look long. See there? I mean, if this was like uh, the center of my foot before with half here and half here, but all of a sudden my foot seems to end right here. Well, that sure makes my toe look long, doesn't it? And so then we think the toe is long. So we start, you know, trimming the toe back, which because the foot uh, is hard here, but soft here, then it can just take this coffin bone here and the toe and it can start moving it back like that. So you're moving this part back like uh, forward and this part back. And it in the meantime, in the soul, you, you don't even realize that's going on because you're trimming it the same way to look the same way. But in reality, your foot is bending. And then, okay, look here. So we know if we've been in barefoot quite a while that they say there is an arch in the quarter. They believe that there is a natural arch in the quarter, right? I don't see one on this foot. The only time there would be one on this foot is if I pulled all this down this way and then I pulled this way, I would bend the foot, which would naturally bend the center up. See, it's all mechanical. It's all structural. It's all just like that little squeezy thing. If you move something here and squeeze something there, it's going to move something over here. 
Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Well, let me uh, clear all this out. All right. So I want to show the picture. See, this all really came to light um, because we have a gal in the group and um, she misunderstood on the first trim and totally trimmed the heels out. I mean, completely, you know, and I was freaking out and uh, I was so worried about the horse and everything. And so I asked her to take pictures and she took pictures like for three days and you could literally see this happening. So now I'm going to go find that picture. So hold on a second. If anybody has any comments or wants to say anything while I'm looking at a picture, please take over. Uh, can I just ask not related questions? Hi, I'm Alana from Hungary. Um, could somebody give a definition of frog stay? Like, like I say, scientific anatomical term. Um. Well, uh, Bracy Clark named it the frog stay. Um, I don't even know if it had a name. He found when he started doing this was in, uh, you know, he was one of the first vets, and they originally opened the vet yeah. schools for horses not small animals and not cattle, not nothing like that. It was for horses in France and England. And yeah, of course it would be because that's the war machine, right? Um, and the commerce and everything, the horse was everything. And so Bracy Clark named it the frog stay. He also called it the bolt like a bolt, like you bolt uh, something onto something else to make it stay there. Yeah, but um, what I'm interested in, if I go to a veterinary school and they will ask me to give them the definition of frog stay, just to describe it, for example, to the vet student, how would you recommend or how would you describe it? This is a part uh, of the, you know. Go ahead, what? The, it's like uh, a frog stays a part or internal part or a part of internal hoof that consists of sit situated, um, you know, and, and stuff like that, basically. Is there like a definition like that? Okay, well, um, I don't know if there's a definition like that, but what I would describe, the first of all, the frog stay is just part of the frog, okay, and the frog is a part of the hoof capsule. The frog, whole frog, grows from the frog corium and it, it grows, it's exfoliated and grows off. So it's not permanent. It's not a permanent part of the, of the horse. And um, uh, it, what the frog stay is actually is the part of the frog that grows between the bulbs of the horse's foot and it stabilizes the whole back of the foot and it it uh, supports supports the digital cushion up in place where it's supposed to be uh it's a major support for the foot it uh is called the, he called it the frog stay because it really stabilizes the whole back of the foot um, between the bulbs keeps the heels from contracting, things like that. Um, that's some of the way. And then I would show how, like I have those videos, you know, um, that show how it works. You know, you, yeah. you got, you can look at both sides. You can look in the hoof capsule. You can look on the outside and see that frog stay between the bulbs. Now, when you're trimming the heels out, here, okay, so I'm going to share this, new share. I didn't want to distract anybody from the subject. So no, just... that's all right. That's all right, because it's all a part of it, you know. So, so here we literally see a horse making his own heels out of sidewall. 
Okay. Here's where she misunderstood and totally cut his heels out. See that? I mean, he has good shaped cartilage. See it? See how it's pulled down? Now, this is like two days later, and this is like a day after that. Okay. Look at the shape of the cartilage. Look how it's changed, how it's just a little rounder. Look at how the heel bulb is down here. Look how now it seems to be lifted. Okay. And not only that, but see, you have this little kind of scar thing you can look at too to see how it's changing. See, and by the time you get over here, look at the cartilage, how rounded it is, how much higher it is, and look how much heel you have. And this is, which is, it's not real heel, right? This is sidewall that was pulled around. And that's this part of the foot right here. This foot wants to stand up. This hairline was meant to be, oh, let me annotate here, just a second. This, let me get a good color. This hairline is meant to be about like that. Maybe not quite that steep, but up, up in there, okay? Let me undo. I don't know if I like green. Um, it was meant to be up here. And the whole foot, this cartilage was meant to be supported up here. That's the foot that we were looking at. Um, just a minute here. Let's go back there real quick. Okay, that horse that we were just looking at has the same foot as this horse. His hairline's meant to be up here. His cartilage is meant to be up here, not down here. And so you trim the heels out like that. And of course, it's crushing the cartilage here. But that foot wants to stand up just like this foot here. And now that you've removed all this hoof wall here, um, let's see, new share. Well, uh, that's a big old horse. You know, there's a lot of strength and power and movement in this tendon and everything else. So the tendon is pulling up as well as everything else. And the cartilage and everything, that horse's foot wants to be in that place. Just like if I push my nose, the side of my face, okay? my nose wants to be where my nose wants to be and so here you have it he took this and he just wrapped it around the back of his foot see there let's see Meli linda can i ask something yeah it, that picture um, those three pictures mm -hmm. and how many days was three that? three days so if i understand you correctly then this progress is bad. This is nothing what we want because no. the heels or what's supposed to be heels have been wrapped around inwards. Yeah. And and everything is um, wrong. But what's deceiving for me, at least, is the hairline seems to be better. Can Can we say that in doing this error, do does she have a better um place to continue from from doing this well probably not no no because he would have had some heel you in the know first picture yeah yeah um yeah. uh so i mean you know i don't know what the foot looked like before no you know now i know you, you can see this line here showing that his heels were a little bit under run yeah. maybe maybe but not that bad of course that much lowered uh well well even look 
I don't think this, no, I don't think this was a good thing at all. Um, but I see that the horse adapted and look at the change in the an ankle, the yeah. angle. See how he corrected? He was able to correct it. It's a matter of survival. Now, there because might be a time when you might do something like this for some, yeah. we're going to find that out in the future. But uh, right here, you've started heel contraction as well. Yeah. You know, because you, I can see, I can see why people in barefoot trimming that mm -hmm. chops the heels off think that they're doing something good because if if they get the same progress or yep. non-progress like yeah. improved, then it looks like they have improved when they haven't exactly. and they can say that oh wow look now at the big digital cushion and yep. the heels are up from the ground and la di da and everything yep. when it's not so i yeah. can see why why they are so keen on doing what they're doing because they cannot interpret the results correctly exactly yeah exactly and, and this is what it's all about it's all about interpreting correctly you know that what you see is what is really going on you know um yeah see and they're all they're all doing this they're uh, they've all been taught to see this as development digital cushion development or oh i'm developing the cartilages no you're bending the cartilages and deforming and distorting the foot see because this is the real foot here see that cartilage up there now this is a wild horse too and what's it what i find interesting about him is he's got the short little pasterns like chester here you know, but this horse has the same foot as this horse. And so he's going to stand up with that foot, that tendon, everything else is calling that foot to stand up. And so, you know, I think it's interesting that uh, uh, how they, it's a mode of survival, but it's definitely not the best. I mean, he may survive and a horse may function and most of them do like this their whole life. You know, unless you keep, but once you keep, but there's constant pressure in the foot, constant inflammation, nothing is ever going to work quite like it should. You know, can they survive? Can they adapt? Yeah. But as far as performance, it's going to affect them. Uh, if it doesn't seem to affect them right away, long term, you're going to have arthritis, you're going to have tendon problems, you're going to have, because they have to, because they're going to have to adapt in the way they move as well. See, um, because everything is not going to be working correctly. And because, um, oh, well, they're always talking about, uh, is it form follows function? Well, I think function follows form. Has everybody heard that? Form follows function. Is that the way they say it? So, Linda, this yeah. is Antoinette. Do you mind if I add a comment? No, no, please do. Um, so I, I've been listening with great detail and I've been following you for I don't even know how long. I don't I had to leave your Zoom chat earlier. I'm happy you're back. Oh. Um I, I'm following this, and this is really interesting to me today because I can track before I found you I can track all of this degression I'll call it of my mare's hooves from the point a barefoot trimmer took over where she had and now that you know she finally has some heels and you know the back of the foot is actually where it's supposed to be mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at pictures from 15 years ago and I'm thinking damn excuse me um it's all right <laughs> she she was better off 15 years ago when i was doing her myself you know mm -hmm. before a professional did her because you know she wound up like with and i can remember he said well, she has no heel bulbs right and mm -hmm. so then she you know eventually with him ripping her heels out wound up with heel bulbs 
even more pronounced than that picture on the right. Yeah. Um, you know, and they weren't heel bobs at all. And I'm still, I mean, she's 23 now. And mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to, to comment that you're absolutely correct. And you're saying that they will compensate, they will survive, but it is reflected everywhere else else up into their body and once that inflammation process sets in in their body you know unless you get rid of what's causing it in the first mm -hmm. place you know they are it is they'll get arthritis in their you know bone joints you know everywhere up the leg particularly in the knees it goes further into the shoulders it's just and I just want to scream every time I watch one of your chats that you Aww. should be like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, if if only people knew this, they quit tormenting their horses. Yeah. And I do body work on horses and I'm I'm in Aiken, South Carolina. So I'm working on all these show horses. Mm -hmm. And you know, you try to tell owners, you know, this is starting with the feet, and they just don't get it because they're paying exorbitant amounts to these farriers. To these farriers, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, go, okay, just Pull the shoes, pull the shoes, let the horse do, let the feet do what they want to do, you know, because the farriers just, they blunt the toes, you know, they back the shoe up, but they still chop the heel out and it's, yeah, it's flat, but it's not functioning. And the reason yeah. my business is so good is because all these horses are miserable. Yeah. Isn't that, it's terrible, it's, isn't it? it I, yes. I'd love not to see a miserable horse. I would love to work on a healthy horse. <laughs> <laughs> would that be great? Wouldn't it be? Anyway, sorry. Um, no, don't be sorry. And I just want to tell people, you know, uh, if you have a story or a comment or anything, I mean, some questions we do need to leave to the end. But if I ask you to talk or or if you have a comment about what we're talking about or a story like this, um, please speak up. You know, because people need to hear that. And uh, I like to know that I'm getting through and you're understanding what I'm showing you here. Oh, absolutely. You're doing an excellent job. And I was going to speak up earlier when you did the squishy ball, because that was an excellent analogy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> good, good. Then anyway, I'm, okay. I'm yeah. muting again. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, anyway, this is a wonderful thing to find out. You know, truth is a wonderful thing, but it's also a bitter pill. You know, sweet in your mouth and bitter in your belly. You know, truth is is great um, to find the truth because the truth always does set you free. See, it also hurts because you look around and you see um, how deceived and incorrect the world is in this area of course many areas but we are focusing on this one and so it's like i always say well man's been dealing with horses for how long and he can't get one digit right my god how messed up is he on so many other things right in our in our high halls of higher learning all right because we never advanced because all this error about horses' feet got written in some of the first vet books on feet, and they've been the standard ever since, you know, for over 200 years um, by, I can't remember that other guy's name that was such a creep in the vet school. He took over the vet school uh, pretty soon after it opened there in London, and, uh, you know, he wound up, he did just did dirt to Bracey Clark on a constant basis, which is why Clark couldn't get ahead with his research and studies, because he's always being subtly bad mouthed and blackballed and stuff by this professor, what's his butt. But anyway, then he wrote a book on horseshoeing. And that book became the standard. And it's full of error. And so they've just been believing the same old error for hundreds of years. And so then you have the same people who've been educated. It's tradition handed down into farriery. And uh, you go tell a man that what, what he's been doing his whole life is wrong. <laughs> you know, because. So you know I have how... a story for you there. 
okay i want to hear it too okay so um I don't want to mention any names, but one of your your favorite doctors. Um, I was part of with this barrier that I fired. I was part of a year long hoof growth study because you know for years they were saying that like you know it would take nine to twelve months to grow out a hoof capsule. Uh huh. So every month, you know, my horse's hooves would be digitally measured. Blah blah blah, um, and. Of course, my healthier horses will regrow a hoof capsule, you know, anywhere from four to six months. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, famous doctor just couldn't understand all of this because it just doesn't happen, right? Because my horses must be sick. But when you think about all the research that they do on these horses, these aren't horses that are out living happy lives. These are horses in the vet schools that they are inflicting pain on. Yeah. Um, and so it makes sense that they can't grow a hoof capsule because their whole body is out of whack. Yeah. So yeah, anyway, yeah. muting again. <laughs> well, see, and here's the deal. So like when I was experimenting, <laughs> <laughs> All right, by putting boots on my horse and keeping his feet wet uh, while I was trimming the frog, experimenting with moisture, right? And I used these easy boots that got these dials on them. And so it put pressure up here, right in the center of the coronary band. And so uh, it created this big, ugly divot Yeah, there. Well... Um, he grew out a whole dorsal wall in seven months, you know, because, and here's something I found out too. They had a their first adoption here many years ago in Girard, Kansas, BLM, bunch of Mustangs. And uh, I was talking to this guy and he said, when they first bring them in, their feet grow like crazy. And so they wait six to eight months and their feet slow down in growth and that's when they have these guys come in with these hydraulic chutes and they run them in and trim them oh that's so cruel yeah <laughs> and, anyway yeah well, and, i got it so they're healthy they're out moving and their feet grow faster you know and when they're not healthy or or whatever they're not moving around much their feet don't grow and so you know i like using the dremel and the the grinder and stuff like that just even you know uh brush up the sole slightly to because i think that these tubules are like fiber optics and that they s- do signals to grow or slow down i mean that's just a theory but it makes sense to me you know and so that's why i like to you know kind of kind of just uh smooth out the sole Gently, nicely, as if it was being sanded by wear, because I felt that it promoted soul growth. Could be right, could be wrong, whatever. But I do know that wear and stuff does promote growth. But anyway, all right. So um, let's see here. Okay, so here I just have the whole thing. Okay, see, I've showed this picture how they get, see right here, this shows how it gets twisted around in here. And we're going to see it on a lot. And then the periopal grows over all of it and seals it into one big fancy package. And you don't even know that it's there. So, let's see. Yeah, it's, and this horse too. See, um, this horse does not, some of these horses don't want to have those 30 degree hairlines. I'm telling you, well, none of them do, but this, okay, here we go. This is what, oh, I'm stuck on something. Just a second. Okay. Look, I want you to look at the shape of the foot here and the shape of the cartilage. And it's kind of up in the air, foot still bound. Okay. But look at the heels. Okay, now remember, we're talking about how this sidewall gets pulled in, right? Okay, now, because uh, the heel was trimmed some more, okay, 
And it, it, see, you could go back the other way too. I could switch the pictures and I could say, well, we've been restoring the heels on this horse and now look, see what I mean? And so as the heels got pulled forward and pulled this more in, well, that part of the wall doesn't bend quite as well. And so then it creates this funky square looking thing. Does everybody see that? See how he pulled this part of the wall in, but it it actually uh, didn't pull in right in this little spot right here. And of course, this is the experiment I did with my horse where I kept the boot on him. Well, this uh, I kept a boot on this foot for uh, actually a week altogether. But this was what happened in several days when I <clears throat> trimmed the central sulcus periopal frog be uh, periopal between the bulbs, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you can see what happened in three days. And this shows you, too, how elastic these hoof capsules really are. Um, because if you look over here, you can see that the cartilage was really pulled down and rounded. So I knew it was not supposed to be like that. And so that's when I found, oh, well, this periopal is causing us problems, holding us back. Yeah, and wow. so what? What? Somebody say something. Oh, somebody's unmuted again. Let me find that person. Uh, oh, unmute you. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Anyway, oops, sorry. that's okay. All right, so then you go. I just want you to notice some things that happened. Like, um, first of all, notice the bulge right here. Notice the dish in the wall. Notice the heels run forward like this, and the cartilage is rounded. In this foot. Notice how the cartilage has gotten straighter. Um, the heel is slightly more upright and there's less dish in the wall. And if and these pictures are taken at the same angle. You can tell by the crack he's got in his foot there. It's just almost exactly the same. And then on this was like the 21st. This is the 23rd. And this was the 24th. This is the true cartilage here, fully expanded. Okay. And then notice how the dish is out of the wall and how up more upright the heel is. See, this is how elastic the foot is. This is how much the foot can just be bound by periopal and frog. And Linda, did you do any other trimming or did you just trim the periopal in those days? In, just in, the periopal. That's amazing. Just the periopal between the bulbs and that was deep into the frog. And this was in uh, uh, 12, this was in 20 when I first started thinking that might be an issue because um uh, and the reason I thought so was because my feet looked great on the bottom from the sole view, almost everything I would want. But when I would look at the side, it looked like this. And I knew that all this was wrong, that the cartilage did not look like that, that the the wall was not supposed to be dished. But see, what happens is when all this, look, all this that is expanded out here, when it's pulled under like that, Okay, your coffin bone's in here, it's on a joint. So you take all this digital cushion, all these parts of the foot, and you're cramming everything up this way. Well, then that causes that coffin bone to rotate this way, but it's causing the hoof capsule to pull out this way, and that's why you get the dish. See, because the inner foot is pulling back this way, the, ca the capsule's pulling that way. And so you get this dish because, well, just like with the squeezy ball, everything's got to go somewhere, right? If you're taking all this anatomy that's back here and you're forcing it in up here, coffin bone can't do anything but rotate. It's like a doorknob. You know, it's stuck there. Um, 
And so then when you start releasing all the pressure that's been pushing up on that coffin bone, causing the toe to tip down and pull back, then the so dish comes I out of the wall. By that, you're saying that the digital, not the digital cushion, the um, periopal forces the frog up and makes the coffin bone rotate down? Well, uh, what it is is when, when you're trimming the heels out and the foot is being compressed, the periopal holds it all there once it's there. It doesn't force it to do that. What forces it to do that is all the digital cushion and everything that's being, and even the frog, okay, all of it has been forced up into this part of the coffin bone up here. And because it's stuck on a joint, then it pushes that joint forward and it rotates the dorsal wall of the inner coffin bone down. And so it's, it creates a mechanical situation that is forcing the capsule forward, but the inner toe down. And so that's why you get that dish there. And it's just like with the squeezy ball. See, it's not the, the, it's not uh, the periopal per se. It is that the periopal is holding all that there because the periopal goes to work to save the foot and to try and hold the whole foot together. And the periopal can grow over the whole frog. It can fill up the central sulcus. You you have a periopal frog and you don't even know it. Um, uh, but I, you know, and I haven't shared a lot on that, I guess, because I was also afraid people just start cutting haphazard and not know what the heck they were doing. And then, like, I've been restoring the heels on this horse at this time in 20 for four years. Okay, not realizing it was a whole inner foot issue as well, that it wasn't just about growing hoof wall in the heels. And so, so when I did it, there was capsule, look at the amount of capsule I really have here. There was capsule to release this foot into. But if there was not enough capsule and heel to release the foot into, then you would release it and there's nothing there. And so you just, you know, the heels come out. You know, this periopal is meant to hold that together because you don't want your heels just popping out the back of the capsule. You have to grow more capsule on there. See? Um, so I, I leery sometimes about telling people about periopal because then they see because we want to fix our horse and so we're always hearing something that we should do and so we go out and try it you know because we think uh we could we 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 feel guilty because our horses are a lot of times unsound it's either due to the trimmer or us or whatever and so we're looking for an answer an overnight answer but this is not an overnight night answer it's just a part of this anatomy and how it works. And so you have to know what you are doing because uh, uh, it's like uh, with Dodo, you know, uh, and Sabina, uh, 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 Simone, not Sabina, and stuff. How she uh, trimmed off a lot of periopal and then the wet season came and Dodo's foot just out the back. <laughs> You know, because the feet are bound. Okay, so anyway. Uh, so anyway, uh, but then what happened was my boot broke and my experiment came to an end till the wet season when I did both feet. And then I managed to get some boots with that dial thing and that kind of screwed me up. But um, see, I knew that this cartilage had to be that size. But anyway, the point is, you see how flexible these feet are. So if this foot can do this when it's got heel in and everything, then that foot we were just looking at, um, it's not hard to imagine that uh, this foot can take this and 
stand up again and pull that around underneath it so it has fake heels. You know? Okay. Anyway, so uh, anybody got any comments? That's just the good, the bad, and the ugly part of the horse's ability to adapt so well. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. I, I'm so thankful to be able to finally understand it. <laughs> it's like, it's like a Chinese puzzle. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm grateful that you're still doing it. Not only that you're still doing it, that you, but that you put yourself out there for absolutely everybody. I think it's fabulous and I'm continuing to follow everything. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for those good, encouraging words. Well, I agree you, completely. You keep at it. And, and the discussions going on in these videos lately, um, I don't know how I lost track of them for so long, but the discussions um, lately have been really, really good. I That's, enjoy watching them. Even if I can't be here, I watch them all later. Great. Great. Well, thank you. Thanks for sharing, too. Say, we're all a part of this. We all become a part of the data. We're, we really are gathering data, you know, and who better to do it than us? Because we're horse moms, you know. We, we notice the slightest thing going on with these horses. You know, because because for one thing, uh, we know we're gonna have to fix it. You know, <laughs> you know, we're gonna doctor him. Oh no! <laughs> oh oh, here comes the vet bill. You know, <laughs> and stuff. And so, um, whether it's we're having farriers doing it or we're doing it ourselves, we notice every little thing. And you know what? If they were smart, they would listen more to people. I do realize you have some owners that just blah, blah, blah. But I'm telling you, we notice things, you know. But the thing is, they wouldn't have any answers for it anyway, you know, because this is hidden from them. That's not speaking. Uh, I don't want to, uh, you know, nobody would do this on purpose. This is inherited ignorance, inherited error. Uh, and you couldn't know any of this if it wasn't for photos. In, in my experience, their answer is always, well, I did that because of the confirmation of the horse. Yep. Which would be okay if they knew anything at all about confirmation of horses, but most of them <laughs> don't even watch a horse walk before they trim it. That's so, the... Anyway. I think they have a list of those things in the, in the farrier schools. Maybe. Okay. Excuses. I haven't okay. been to one. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> 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 I'm just a hack amateur. <laughs> yeah, we're hacks. Yeah. Us hacks. That's what they call us. Hacks. It's like I said, the best compliment I ever got from a farrier on YouTube was, how can somebody that doesn't know what they're doing teach people who don't know what they're doing? <laughs> I thought that was excellent. Because at least if you know you don't really know what you're doing, um, you can find out, but they, on the other hand, think they know what they're doing and don't. So you can't learn. You know, if you already think you know, you can't learn. And but here's the thing. Uh, uh, in a lot of my earlier YouTube videos, because of what I was taught through the barefoot movement, I sincerely thought I knew what I was doing. And he was technically talking about tool use you know they criticize you mostly on tool use especially you know it just pains them to even watch you you know, you know and i don't blame them <laughs> you know i wish i was as skilled at using tools as they are but also most but of them you are could only get that skilled if you mutilated hundreds of horses before you figured it out there you go, <laughs> you know, like a like a Ginsu knife commercial with them. Zoom. But I do admire their tool use. I admire a lot of their skills, you know, and I also know that it's very, very hard work and that that most of them, all of them really are very sincere, really do want to help. But if if your education is flawed and your peers and going back 
you know, generation after generation to this flawed uh, understanding of anatomy. Um, I mean, you're really stuck in a in a system, you know. So, you know, I don't know. It's a, it's bad. It would make you feel bad to think that you'd trimmed some horses into bad situations, you know. I did. I did it with my horses. I understand how it happens. Uh, you know, but I mean, you know, see with me, if I break something, I got to fix it. And I, I don't have enough money to call somebody. <laughs> so, so that's why we're here, because I'm broke. There you go. I think part of the problem with farriers is that they see the horse every four, five, six, eight weeks. Yeah. So yeah. they don't see what's going on, but they get to the horse and the horse has long feet and there's a problem. So they trim the way that they've always trimmed and yeah. they go about their merry way until the next trim. And, and they just keep doing the same thing because they don't know to do anything different. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. And I can understand why, too, because you see how deceptive these horses feet are, you know, uh, it's like with my pony, you know, I didn't real. now I can look and see where her foot was getting smaller and smaller and smaller because I was taken. See, I did it according to proportion. I got to remember that word trimming according to proportion. I was taught certain proportions, the one thirds, two thirds balance, natural balance of the equine foot. Has anybody else ever heard of that? how they I, it, i've heard of it yes okay well it's very popular Me especially too. in natural balance trimming and stuff like that where they believe that you have basically uh two-thirds behind the apex of the frog and a third in front and they have some different formulas for that as well but when you don't know that this cartilage can all be pulled down and forward and you got a fake heel um what was the the center of the foot like if we took um just a minute here let me well i've lost my annotation oh there you are annotate okay so uh get this get a color all right so if this was the center of the foot, I'm trying to get the same distance, same distance from here to here about, okay? And as you trim the back of this foot, it gets shorter because, I mean, this is the distance and now it's shortened to this. Okay, so that means that, let's see if I can do this right. That means that this distance is getting shorter and this distance is getting longer slowly and gradually. So it's like I say, as you trim the heels out and they become false heels, then your toe starts to look longer. And so then you think, well, look over here. Doesn't the toe look longer? See it? And so you think you got to back up the toe. And so then you start to bend that foot and get a smaller and smaller. Starts getting shorter from here to here. But on the sole, it just is a gradual mini version of itself over time. So that, you know, Farriers don't take pictures of the side of the feet. Nobody has done what people are doing now in taking pictures of these feet. And without pictures, we would know none of this. See, none of it. So the fact that it's been lost or not known uh, ever, all right, uh, is just, I don't know. I don't know what to say. You know, the, see, to have understanding, to have understanding of what's going on, why it's going on. A horse could do this to its own feet just by where, okay? So 
you know, that it can happen with, with people rasping on them and nipping them is no surprise either, you know. But when you take a horse that has totally worn its heels out and you make it the poster child for the barefoot movement, you know, and you have everybody purposely trimming out the heels, thinking they're developing the digital cushion, see. Okay, well, let's see. Is this right. a good time for a break? That, I was hoping you'd say so. Um, <laughs> let us meet back here at uh, 12 at 1 o'clock. And then okay. I'll see if I can get a hold of that girl and see if she'll let me do a hoof evaluation. Okay. okay if no, not, okay. maybe I'll just turn off the record and we'll do one anyway. And I'll, I won't put it on YouTube, though. Uh, uh, Linda? Yeah. If you have, if you have some time, I sent you pictures. Of oh, okay. Just, I think one food. Okay. And uh, this, this is a peary food, but it's really messed up, and it's all about this long toe and how the he, she was trimmed out. This okay. horse has a lot of issues. I'm waiting for her X-rays, and I'm okay. helping the person. The person is not in Hungary. But uh, okay. she was in tears and she absolutely, she just doesn't, didn't know what to do. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I thought, uh, well, uh, she already, she has two courses, so it's one of them. But I think if, if she's able with tact to pull that case out, it will be amazing. And I okay. think, you know, if, if she works hard, I think she will be able to. It will be a really good example of what tact can do, really. Okay. I think. Yeah, I'd be, anyway. I'd be glad to look at it. And uh, okay. Uh, okay, we're we're, we're going to take a break and we will meet back here in 15 minutes. So if you're on Thank YouTube. You. I go, go uh, feed the horses. <laughs> okay. See you soon. Bye. If you're on YouTube, uh, you want to fast forward 15 minutes because <laughs> I don't think I can turn this off. So, whatever. I'm going to use up their storage space. That'll teach them. All right. We'll see you guys in uh, 15 minutes.
Okay, I'm back. <laughs> oh, I'm late. <laughs> Sorry about that. Is everybody there? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well. Yes, had, we are here. I had um something to eat and something to drink and all that kind of stuff. And now I got some coffee and I'm raring to go. And I got a hold of Sophia, Sophia, um, to ask her if I could do a hoof evaluation, which um most of the time I just do them anyway and stuff, but since it's on YouTube live. I want to ask the person, you know what I mean? Hmm. All right. So, um, okay. So on the group page, okay. New share, just a minute here. New share. I saw this today. Uh, share screen. Okay. So on the group page is a group post um from sophia and it says <clears throat> looking for opinions on my mare's hooves just pulled versa octos that's a composite shoe on her she was way more comfortable in them um see a lot of times i don't read real clear uh, I, I couldn't figure out well when you look at this foot did that did that bring the page the picture of the foot up clear Okay. Yeah, yeah, it looks I, fine. Yes. Okay, so I couldn't, I was seeing this and not connecting the fact that um, this is from the glue on clips right here. See? Okay, uh, yeah. I was thinking, and what's, so that's glue probably that we're seeing there. I thought it was periopal because um, actually, your horse does have and i think uh i think this is periopal but i think the glue took the periopal off right there do you see that i have a bigger picture let me go back and read i'm getting ahead of myself okay looking for opinions on my mare's hooves just pulled the versa octos on her she was way more comfortable in them definitely think it's due to the angle difference it made on her hinds so must have elevated them great digital cushion on all four i have not yet gotten to map them yet hoping i can do that sometime and so um uh, I had talked to Sophia before. I found her in Messenger, um, but I kind of forgot. So about sorry about that, Sophia <laughs> and stuff. And actually, we had uh, quite a conversation, and I shared quite a bit with her. Um, okay, so I asked her if she was doing a horse or a farrier, and she said she was. But then a farrier took over for a couple or. A I guess it was a farrier took over. Let me see what she say here. Um, oh, she sent me some more stuff too. Okay. Um, I have been trimming her a year, had a professional step in for a cycle or two. Now I'm trimming her again. Okay, so, um, and I asked her in a message, why she thought the digital well i asked her on the page what was it that made her think the digital cushion was well developed um i'm going to ask her again here though uh oh you she's watching the chat she's sending me messages oh you and she says no, she lowered the toe angle a bit on the hinds and it helped a tad. Yeah, I think I think that would too. I think that would too. Um, so the, then since you're watching, I'm talking to her, she's in Messenger. Since you're watching, um, Sophia, what I'd like to know is what is it that makes you think that she has a well-developed digital cushion? Did, who who told you that? I'll wait for your answer here. If you're listening. 
Now that takes a minute to come over onto the YouTube if that's where she's watching it. And so, um, and she hasn't been in the first part of the hoof chat where we showed how the horse makes heel. Um, Linda? Yeah. If, if she's watching the chat, can she unmute and then just talk instead of trying to type? Um, no, she'd be on YouTube, I think. Pretty sure Good. she's on YouTube. Okay. Um, uh, I could send, well, let me see. Let me see if I can send her a link. Um, da -dum -dum -dum. I can send her a link to the to the Zoom if she wants to zoom in there. If I can find it, copy invitation. There we go. Okay. Send that to you here if you want to join. Otherwise, otherwise, I'm telling her. So I'm asking her that question, okay, because that came up in the replies here. And also, um, there was somebody who replied, uh, just a minute here. Oh, well. Oh, and Elena, Elena, remind me that we, before we do anything and we're done, we're going to look at this foot that you posted to me, okay? Are you there? No, she went, oh, she's on, but she might be out feeding. Okay, here we go. Oh, okay, so she's done dissections. All right. Um, and this plays into um, some stuff that's important to know as well. So observation. What? Sorry, I just said I look back. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay. So she says observations are based on different dissections I've done via palpitation, then dissecting. It's very robust and full, feel it, filling in space between lateral cartilages. Okay. Well, that that makes sense. I join but not sure I can stay much longer. Got to go play with the pony. Okay. Okay, so um, in that case, okay, I'm understanding what she's thinking and what she's feeling because it could, could be full and seem robust like that. So, okay, but we're going to go through this. Uh, I think also, Sophia, in, in understanding where I'm going to come from in this dissection, there's then, because you have done dissections and you do know about palpating, um, that there is something here. So, uh, hold on a second. That I'm doing the evaluation in light of we t what we talked about in the first hour and a half of this hoof chat. And that is how horses' feet get bound up without us knowing about it and um, how it's like a squishy ball. And so this is all going to fit together, though you might not understand it unless you watch the first part of what we were talking about okay i do not doubt that and see like if we let's put let's clip on this picture here does everybody see that picture yes, yes. okay look at what she says the horse has a di good digital cushion do you see because she squeezes it she palpates it and it's real full right here do you see that okay yeah. 
um, just a second, because I want to get another picture and kind of flip it around because I copied all these pictures. So hold on. Um, well, here they are. Holy Hannah. Let me, I need to close out some pictures. I'm getting lost. Hold on. Hold on. A second. Let me find that picture specifically. Okay. Got a new share. New share. There we go. Okay. Let's flip it around. Okay. So the digital cushion lies in here, right? And of course, the, this is the cartilage over here, and it's thin um, and narrow. I'm going to show you something here. Let's go to just a second here. I'm going to go find my last die section. Uh oh. There we go. so that we can look at that real quick because remember it's all about the inner foot we want to know what's going on with the inner foot um so i gotta go find a dissection just a second because she talked about dissection how you palpate it and it seems real full and firm um let's see here is this the dissection no. Just a second. Must be the other one. Hold on. Um, e. I'm looking at my files. Yep, that ain't it. So it wasn't E. Try I. Crud. I wonder what I do with that. Uh, just a second. Do, do, do. We'll try this other one. Got all these chips with pictures all over them. How to do? That is not it. Just a second. I could have swore it's on that. That one. Linda, yeah. I want to tell you that it's something, and I'm sure that everybody will um, uh, agree with me. Okay. Whenever you so you search with for uh, some pictures or uh, you search for something for us, uh -huh. don't get upset that you may take some time. Okay. Because it's normal. You have so many things to tell us. You are telling us so many things, and always you are you are anxious to do it fast for us. We are here to for you. Okay. Thank wait. you. Thank you for telling me I mean, that. Everybody agrees with this. You are giving us the the most precious gift of all. Yes. For gratitude. <laughs> Definitely. So, thank you. I don't care. I agree. Them. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you for letting me know that. Uh, yeah. No. Because yeah, I do get a little stressed. No, no don't no get stress. stressed. No, we are here. No, and I, okay. I mean, take it easy. We are okay. here for you and we will stay for you another 200 hours if you want. Okay. 
I thank I, you. Personally, I don't care, uh, but I'm sure that everybody agrees with this. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Bye. Hundred percent. Let's see. Okay, because this might take a second, but I I feel that it's important. We're in it um, for the long haul. I'm trying to think if I have the pictures uh, somewhere else. It, you know, that last dissection I did where I did a deal on, well, and I have the video on YouTube of the of uh, how the digital cushion and the frog stay work together, you know. And then I had cut that foot in half to show internally the digital cushion. Um, uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, Linda, I just wanted to ask everybody for a bit of help while you're looking. A friend of mine just called me and they were on the trail and he asked me whether I experienced anything like one of his horses experienced. Um, I, I just told him that I never had such experience. His horse basically passed out several times. Uh, like uh, the person was riding her, the horse had to lay down. He, the horse was out, then got up and proceeded as normal. And he told me that maybe the girth was really, uh, he checked and uh, the rider really pulled the girth really tightly. Uh, so anybody came across such situations, you know, <laughs> or no, that the horse can pass out because the girth is too tight. We had something like this mm -hmm. when uh, we, are, we were riding on the um, obstacles. Sometimes when you, the, the, the sting, you, you, you make it very tight, they pass out. It's not, uh -huh. um, it's, it's a kind, uh, it's a matter of uh, circulate, blood circulation. That's, that's and, what I told him. And I, he, told, he, he told me that's the only thing that was different because yeah. uh, he put a ride on it and the rider made i think he was just scared that his saddle will turn and he really pulled it too tight i think yeah so that that could happen then okay. yes yes once it happened to a friend of mine when we went to horse um, riding on uh, the obstacles uh -huh. the show jumping uh -huh. Yeah. And he was afraid of the saddle too, and he just pulled the chins very, very strongly. And uh -huh. uh, the, 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 it, it, the horse fainted. It's faint. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's exactly, I think, what happened. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, thank you, because, you know, it was, we, you always learn and something new comes up, and it's good that you can ask whether people had similar experiences or saw or heard about such things. Hey, Elena. Yeah. yeah. This, is, this is Antoinette. In, in human beings, they call that a vasal, vasal vagal syncope. And it, it's essentially a sudden drop in heart, in heart pressure. Yeah. In blood pressure. Okay. Yeah. And so, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, the girth goes around so many nerves, especially the vagus nerve. Um, yeah, you know, that, that that it just totally makes sense that if the, the, it's a stress reaction, right? Yeah. So, so instead of like dying, they faint, yeah. um, bad, but especially if somebody's on their back, but it does happen. Yeah. Okay. Well, good to know. I will pass it on to him. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's yeah. like there is. It's like when the Victorian ladies put the what the that? chin. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Exactly like this. They fainted yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Poor horse. Anyway, thank you so much for the input. Okay, that worked out just right. I didn't find the dissection pictures, but I can demonstrate what I'm talking about on some of the pictures I do have. First of all, this cartilage isn't much thicker than the cartilage on a chicken breastbone. And so it's curved and the inside of it, is, the digital cushion is attached to the inside of that. Remember I told you that um, 
that the foot includes all this up here. Okay, the whole foot. And so then the digital cushion fills up between the cartilages and all this part of the foot in here, the big fatty digital cushion. But as you notice here, that the cartilages are not attached except for right here. They, this is so that this pastern bone can descend down between them and they spread apart. And it descend, this descends down onto the digital cushion, which then descends down onto the frog stay and the frog. And then, then they're both applying pressure upward. Um, so this, you can see why now that this can be so easily distorted. If you do not have the correct exact heel formation here, um, and this is pulled down, when this gets pulled down, because the heels are not right, then it rounds all this down like that. And uh, in our first part of this hoof chat, we talked about squishies. Remember this minute here, I'm going to reduce the size of that here a minute and see if I still have squishy up somewhere. Because hold on. Oh, stress balls. Okay. So you imagine that you share. Oh, sorry. Da -da -da. See, now where is everything? New share. Okay, stress balls. Stress ball, the ball is shaped like this. Let's say this is the digital cushion. One of these balls is the digital cushion. Okay, and uh, if the capsule is the correct size and the frog stay is located in the correct spot, between the bulbs up supporting the digital cushion where it should be, then um, everything's good. And the shape and the form of the digital cushion is correct. But when the capsule size is reduced, it takes the same digital cushion and it does this number to it. It starts compressing and pushing it up and out the back. And even it can be so that even though you could palpate it, you could feel it, it could seem firm. It's not the true uh, configuration of the foot because in the true configuration of the foot, you and when you palpate a digital cushion, um, you have to uh, also understand the aspect of the frog stay in this whole scenario. And so I'm going to show you another picture in this regard. Um, let's see here. Where do I want to go? Okay, hold on just one second. Um, come on, what's wrong with you? There, <laughs> I'm talking to my computer. What is wrong with you? Let's see, we got it down to hoof memes. H. Okay, just a second. In fact, I'll show you a couple. Um, where are you? Hoof meme. Oh, well, I did find some different things here from a dissection pictures. Okay. Okay, I think this will show, this will start to show it here. Okay, so your digital cushion is in the foot and it's up here. New share. Oh, I'm glad I have, have you. <laughs> I'm glad I'm good for something. <laughs> oh, many things. Okay, so I made this meme and here's the frog stay right here. Now the foot, this is up under and supports, all this supports the digital cushion in place in the foot up here. 
<laughs> okay, so so when you have a correct capsule with the correct frog stay supporting the digital cushion, you can palpate it and you will reach down there and you will feel this. This will feel firm as well, simply because it's being supported up where it's supposed to be. But it also has a healthy frog that is between the bulbs right here, um, pushing all this up and keeping it in place in here. Um, and so when you palpate it, now palpate it, it means you either take your thumb and put it here and then a finger under under here and you, you're squeezing, you're feeling in here, okay? Um, and uh, so here's an, here you see it again. Okay, here's a correct foot. This is the same foot as before. Here you see the frog stay. Now, who was it that was asking me about a frog stay earlier? This, you know, describes it here. Now, this horse has a semi frog stay too, but because the heels have been incorrectly trimmed, it's all been pulled down underneath. Oops, somebody's not muted. Find that. I can find that. Okay, um, so this is an undamaged inner foot and this is a correct frog state. Now here's the thing, Bracey Clark said that in his first experiments, he was deceived by the feet and he did dissections, okay? Because he didn't really know the true anatomy of the foot. And so, um, uh, every hoof capsule you take off does not have a frog stay exactly like this. It does not. Now, I want you to look at the periopal here, the back of the foot. It covers just the back of the foot. It's pretty much straight across here. It's not really pulled down. When the heels are incorrectly trimmed and you have an incorrect fitting hoof capsule, okay, what will happen is, the hoof capsule size and circumference gets smaller and smaller and it can squeeze all this and it can make this even fuller than it actually is because of how it's being compressed in that particular capsule. So like on this foot, uh, because the heels are being tripped out, gradually this will all be being pulled down and this whole area here, as the cartilage rounds out, could also, well, look, it can be uh, being pushed up and out like that. So it could seem, it could seem full and like the horse had a good digital cushion, which it's not that the horse has a bad digital cushion. It's that there's no frog stay up supporting it where it's supposed to be instead everything's been pulled down around and compressed and, and pushed up. And so you could press it and it would feel real firm, but not because it's got the correct configuration between the hoof capsule and the frog and the frog stay and the heels and the heel buttresses and the actual foot itself. This is why we always have to see this foot as a separate entity that in and of itself this foot is a specific way like this horse has a great digital cushion but if it doesn't have the correct capsule configuration back here it's not going to function properly um okay so let's keep going on that okay here i have it again this shows the digital cushion in here. See, there's your cartilage. It's it's pretty thin and it's cupped and then this all filled with digital cushion. Well, look at this like it's a stress ball. If I squeeze this, what's this fat going to do? It's going to pooch out more up here, right? So that if I pushed on it, Sure, it, it's going to feel like a good digital cushion, okay? But if, it, if it's just because the capsule is small 
and stuff and it isn't being supported correctly by a frog stay, then even though, I mean, it's the same digital cushion either way. Say, if I were to trim the heels out of this horse, if I was to reduce the capsule, squeeze the heels together, it's going to make this expand in here. But that's an unnatural expansion. It's an unnatural tightness. Let's see here. Go back. Here you see. OK. Here's an example that we see in barefoot trimming of what happens too. Here, here you see, now this was a, an anatomically correct foot. This is, if we were to cut that foot down the center, this is what we see in the very center, okay? Up between the bulbs, you have a frog stay that supports the back of this digital cushion. And so when you palpate and press down, you can feel the digital cushion, but then you should be able to run into and feel that frog with your, your thumb or finger as well. Um, so what happens is when these feet get deformed, now this is the extreme, you know, and if the heels are not, if the heels, if the cartilage is not only pulled down, but then if it's wrapped around the back of the foot as well and contracting, um, then look at the digital cushion here. Okay, see how that looks nice and wide there? Somebody could mistake that for a correct digital cushion. And of course they do in barefoot trimming, but what has really happened is the heels have been trimmed out. The digital cushion, because it's connected to the bulbs and to the frog, as the frog and everything was being pulled down, it stretched and pulled and widened the digital cushion. And so because uh, the vets and all the professors and uh, everything don't understand this because they did their research from the viewpoint of one wild horse foot that wore its heels out, which became the poster foot for barefoot. And the farriers really never did know to begin with. Then they look at this and they say, wow, that's a healthy digital cushion. No, that's a deformed digital cushion. And this is a pretty much a dead frog. Okay. This is the digital cushion in the right placement up here. And this frog stay supporting clear up between the bulbs is the correct anatomy. Hold on. Okay, had to have a little coffee break there <laughs> and a little coffee. Okay, so we can look at this foot. Look at the different feet. See here, this is a capsule correctly supporting the true foot of the horse, which looks like this. See the the heel buttress here um, gives the, it enough height to where it can grow sole and have the correct configuration of the frog growing between the bulbs, which is that part we call the frog stay, and Bracey Clark called the bolt, because that thing bolts the foot and, and holds it there. And of course, this is the, the heel trimmed out, pulls all this down. It either pulls it down or it wraps it around. See? On horses where it just wraps it around, you think their heels grew. And you think they have heels, but it's not the true heel. Like we learned in the first part of this uh, uh, hoof chat. Okay. Um, I have pictures also of where they're at a clinic somewhere showing a relatively fresh foot that they have dissected and cut in half. And it says... Uh, they're saying, oh, an example of a healthy digital cushion, an example of a healthy foot, but it's not a healthy foot. And this is what Bracey Clark said, this kind of stuff in his dissections, because he didn't know the true anatomy, it deceived him to his embarrassment in his first uh, experiments. 
See, because if you don't know this is the true configuration of the foot, if you don't know the foot is supposed to look like this, and this is what you're teaching, then any distortion down the line in the D section, dissection, you're going to think is normal. You're going to think is natural. Okay, so. So um, here we have more examples. See, because look, um, again, this was a pretty anatomically correct capsule on a very anatomically correct foot. And what this, this is a different horse here, but what it shows here is how much of that foot is soft cartilage and fat and can be deformed, just like a stress ball, okay, squeezy ball. And so it shows you here, this is your digital cushion, and then this has to support that up between the bulbs. Now, I want to drive this home to you that when they cut these feet in half, like what you see here, Look at the different, this is, uh, these two feet were advertised for sale because these are the feet, farriers get them and, uh, you know, they, they freeze dry them and then they put hinges on them so you can open them up and see the inside. Well, depending on which foot you get depends on how you're going to describe the anatomy. Um, this foot here had frog up between the bulbs. Where does that mean? That means you cut the foot right down the center here. Wait a minute. Let me get a, uh, I need my annotate. Hold on. Hold on. Draw. Let's do red. Okay. Right up here. See there? You're cutting the foot right down the center. And you're looking inside, but look at the difference. See how the digital cushion is shaped on this one? Pooching out the back there, you know, uh, but no frog. This horse has literally almost no frog. But look at the digital cushion, same deal on this one. It's pushed up here. And so when you palpate it, putting your finger here and, on, and down here, you're going to feel both. You're going to be feel the frog stay that grows up here between the bulbs right here, supporting the bulbs, keeping your heels from contracting. That's one of the good things it does. And giving you this great suspension. See, you got this frog that'd be like this thick. Great suspension, great support for the foot, good heel. So in this one, you're not. But see, they mistake this for a well-developed digital cushion. That is what is being taught. And so, Sonia, I know that if you've done dissections and um, uh, you have palpated the digital cushion, that you have heard some of this teaching that they are teaching about the digital cushion. And they would think this was a digital cushion when in reality, the heels have been trimmed out of this horse. As the heels are trimmed out, the frog is pulled under the foot and it stretches and deforms and distorts the digital cushion right here. Like, let me show you here. It uh, Okay, so here's your digital cushion. It's supposed to be up here, right? Right up in here, right here. This piece of digital cushion all in here. As the heels trimmed out, it pulls the frog remember this is a piece of frog up here this is your frog stay and this is your digital cushion and so as the heels are trimmed out it pulls this down and under and forward in the foot and as it does so it also takes this digital cushion and it just stretches it down as well as well, it's making the whole container smaller. And so it's pulling it around and under. Well, there, there's a certain amount of fat in here. It's got to go somewhere. And so a lot of times it'll pooch up out the back here. Okay. So if I was to feel that, um, I would, and I had been taught this, which this is what I was taught originally. Okay. 
then I would think not understanding the configuration of both the frog state and the digital cushion, how they work together, how they should should each be formed, then I would think that I had a well-developed digital cushion because that is what they teach. But that is not the true anatomy of the horse. And so, see, all these things, like Bracey Clark said, it deceived him in his first experiments. I should find that and read it. Let me clear all this. Um, just a minute here. OK, but you can see here on these two samples, well, which sample do you get? Which is the anatomy? Which is the true anatomy, right? See? Um, yeah, these were advertised for sale. And I thought they gave a great example of this problem in understanding. Um, okay. The frog stake grows between and supports the bulbs and stabilizes the whole back of the foot back here, as well as acts as a major part of where the rubber meets the road and the suspension system. You know, your tires are part of your suspension system. Um, um, just then, like your shocks, you got your shocks, your shock absorbers. Uh, the digital cushion is part of the suspension system, the frog, and then, of course, uh, the cartilages and the uh, deep digital flexor tendon. All these are part of the suspension system. Um, let's see what else I got here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay, this just gives an example of what feet do when feet distort. Okay, so... So this is like the two sides of the coin here. Um, one, as the heels are being trimmed out, they move forward in the shape of the foot. See the shape of the foot here, how the foot goes like this. Here's your true heel right here. Okay. And this is cartilage. This is all cartilage and fat in there. And so your true heel should be right here. But as the heels are trimmed out, uh, they go forward. Like people think they're taking the heels back every time they take the heels down and back to the base of the frog. But you're really taking them uh, down and out. And as you do so, you trim out the true heel buttress and you get this fake heel and it starts, it can start to move forward in the shape of the foot. And as it does so, it pulls the other anatomy, this frog corium, it pulls it out wide. So this is what you wind up with, real wide in back. But notice something, here is the frog stay under the foot, not up behind between the bulbs where it should be. Um, you wind up with these weird hole looking things and unhealthy frogs. And it pulls the frog corium out this way and that way. And then you wind up with this wide frog. And of course, this side of the, the heel, this heel's more trimmed out than this side and has pulled it out wider here. Um, now, here's the opposite side of the coin when the heels get trimmed out. And now this, if you were to look at this horse from the side, he'd probably look like he had low heels. Um, probably more of a 30 degree hairline. Um, he's got big, thick periopal. It's all holding his foot in a vise so that he can survive. Now, on this horse down here, it's different. On this horse, instead of all this being pulled down and wide, okay, as the heels are trimmed out, the horse don't want to stand like that. So he's trying to stand up. The foot is standing up and it's pulling the sidewall around and in like this. And of course, if he's got any frog stay at all between the bulbs or uh, even periopal has taken over or whatever, his heels won't totally contract, but they will contract more. And the main thing you'll see is this wall be curved around like that. Um, now, down here, I put a picture of what it does. It's like you had two spools here, and it's just uh, pulling the bulb and the cartilage 
all this stuff here, see this, pulls it in here, pulls it in there, just wrapping the whole foot up. Um, you can really see it here. And then this periopal grows, covers over the whole thing. You don't even know what's going on. You know, here's my horse's foot. Um, when I was doing that experiment, I showed you where I kept his foot in a boot and I was trimming out this uh, big thick lump of periopal and um, trying to get his, his central sulcus going more. And um, I didn't realize that his bulbs had all been pulled in like that. My heels were uh, turned in like this. And so that's the response. See, my horse, he never would accept that 30 degree hairline like barefooters try and put on him. And so Linda, his, what? Oh, sorry. Okay. I, before, you go, like, before you finish with this, I'd just like to ask a question. You can answer it whenever you like. Sure, go ahead. Can you explain to me what determines, like, you see the one that you talked about it up top, the wide one, where yeah. the heels are pulled out and the foot opens up wide? And then we have the other situation where you're saying that they're getting contracted and they're shutting, right? Yeah. What determines whether it'll go wide or whether it stays, it will contract and go narrow? What, what's happened in the foot that makes it go one way or the other? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yet. You know, um, uh, I don't know yet. It could just well, be, I noticed that in drafts a lot of times they'll do this. Thing, too, I think, eh? you know um but would so would we approach it the same way if we want to correct the heels we use the same method same idea to same, uh, apply either way technically technically yeah and on these you have to start trimming this frog over because it it really pulls the anatomy over and so the frog is growing real wide so if you're not coming in here and narrowing down this frog um uh because you wind up trimming to frog distortion is what happens okay. so and so you have to the heels will come back and yeah up, like that oh. will eventually close in oh yeah yeah uh the heels will grow back in and and this will come back over see now this is the extreme and see see how the bulbs are pulled together here and you got a kind of a butt crack, yeah. you know, and or cleavage, maybe I should call it that, um, <laughs> you know, and here you don't <laughs> at all. The, the true foot is like a happy medium between that, you know, um, there's some indentation, but nothing like, like what we have been seeing uh, and is on most horses. And stuff. When, when the frog stay comes down and under, like the one that's really wide, I, mm -hmm. I've seen that a lot. But when I'm trimming the frog, I have to trim. It's like a lump of frog stay that's on top of where the central sulcus should be. I trim yeah. that out. Should I, should I leave that or just trim it out because it's frog stay? I've been trimming it out. Um, we're we're trying to well see is it frog stay, you know, or is it uh, periopal? say like okay um with mamie man see see like we're learning to read this stuff because uh uh sometimes it's periopal in fact a lot of times it's periopal i've shown on my horse how how uh i found a whole layer of periopal over the whole frog and it had take it had filled in the whole frog, the whole central sulcus of the frog and was growing like you could trim it, you know, but it was that's what was holding my foot uh, hostage in the cartilages. You know, I show how the cartilages get bent down and rounded behind. And what happened to me was in the wet season, oh, my goodness, my uh, it looked like I was getting a good frog stay and the foot was expanding and all this, and the cartilages. And then as soon as it would dry out, pfft, I'll go right back, you know. And so that's when I started thinking, well, um, and due to some other things that happened, 
I started thinking, well, uh, maybe, I, maybe that's periopal. So I started trimming on it just to see. And that's when my foot expanded. Like um, this deal here. Wait a minute. Man. Just a second. I've lost my pictures. Oh, they're being covered up. Just a second. Close that. I got too many photos open is a problem. Still too many. Oh, screen sharing has stopped. I must have closed something. Um, let me go back and find a picture here. Anyway, anyway, so are you getting the general drift here on what's going on with the foot, the distortion? the different kinds of distortion and how it happens and yeah. why it's like a squeeze ball, why you would think that the digital cushion was healthy and robust when in reality it was distorted because it's like a squeeze ball. You know, you're making the foot squalor, smaller um, and you're squeezing it up out the back is what's happening. Um, I'll show you another one in that regard. Let me go to pictures. Okay, take a deep breath and relax, like Marilyn said, and Andaliki said, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> okay. I really like that squeeze ball um, analogy that you gave. It It's really, um, it's super, super useful. Helping, it helps you understand, I thought. Yeah, it, it definitely does. Will we have a chance perhaps to, um, look at some um, side pictures of healthy uh, or healthier digital cushions for comparison to kind of get that those right proportions yeah well here i'm going to show you this one cool um, thanks just a second here where am i now i've lost the zoom okay there we go screen share I'm not sure who asked that question, but I'm always looking for pictures of good feet, Linda. Anytime you find a picture of a good foot, please post it. Okay. I keep <laughs> trying to get all those bad images from 10 years ago out of my head. Oh, yes. Well, same here. You know, there aren't um, enough pictures of what a hoof's supposed to be like anywhere. I know it. I know <laughs> it just goes to show how bad the problem is. Mostly, right, we'll try to explain to somebody what a good, healthy foot's supposed to look like. Yeah, uh, see, and here we are, you know, knowing some of this stuff. And so, you know, it's, and a lot of it's because the, you got two objects you're dealing with, you know, and they go back and forth. Um, so, okay, so here, here is a, a anatomically correct wild foot. Here is the frog stay. Up between the bulbs. You got to remember now, if we're looking at the back of the foot, the foot is cut right down the center. Okay. The digital cushion in the very back is going to be up here between the bulbs. The frog stay supports that up there. When the heels are trimmed out, because the frog is growing from the skin of the frog corium under here, which is right here. Okay, like this is the inside of the other side of the bulb. You can see it through here. See how I just kind of opaqued it over. I opaqued a fake frog over that. That would be the inside of the frog corium on the side of the bulb right there. This up here is above inside is the digital cushion, which I thought looked like a foot, which was interesting. And so, so this frog supports the digital cushion of the foot. Okay, when it's trimmed out, it slowly is pulled down and under like that. And it does this. Now, this is in some class somewhere. I've had this picture for years. 
that I found on the internet a long time ago. It's in some class somewhere because they did two dissections. Look here, two dissections of an excellent hoof. Note the hairline at the heel. See where they want the hair? This is, this is your 30 degree hairline believers. See it? Look at the hairline, clear down here. They are taught this is a good foot. And so then they, they dissect this foot and look at it. Look, boy, looks like a good big digital cushion, doesn't it? But it's not supposed to be that way. Now, if it was in the bulb area over towards the side and it was like that, that's different. But we're talking about right up here. Let me go find this picture again. Gosh darn. Eh, wait a minute. Let me go find this other picture again because I want to keep that uh, in your mind. Because, see, you got to keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So you get that picture in your head. Oh, man. I'm going to move this. Find that. Oh, there we go in here. How can that be a healthy hoof with those bone angles? Uh, which one? The one that the dissection of an excellent hoof is at the bottom. It's the one they're saying is correct. Yes, what is taught is healthy. The one that's in the middle. At oh, the okay. I got to find it again because for some oh, reason. Oh, I'm sorry. For some reason. It's uh, still on my screen. I'm not. This minute, I'll just close out a bunch of these so I quit losing my pictures. Ah, there we go. Okay. This one on the bottom right here? Yes. Okay. Um, well, they're not looking at the bones, you know, and, and, and plus, uh, uh, when you, okay, when you do these dissections, you got a limp foot. And stuff, uh, the horse isn't so standing. Moved. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking correctly. Yeah, the, the horse isn't standing. And so yeah. uh, a lot of times I notice in mine, uh, the pastern just flaps back like that. And so um, there's nothing to uh, the rest of the bone to support it and all that. So, so, um, so again, you have to keep going back to this. This right here, this little space right here, that's that's all the wider that should be. Um, let me move this. Okay, right here. New share? This little area right here. Oh, oh, new share, sorry. New share. There we go. Okay, this little area right here. Oh, it's even on this foot, this little area right here. Okay, now, as the heels are being trimmed out, this is going to pull this all the way under. It's already pulling it down. Okay. Um, uh, sometimes, uh, and then you'll see a hole there, or you'll see real dead, uh, mushy, uh, unhealthy frog. And that's because the frog is literally pulling this down. And it's literally wanting to pull apart from where it's connected to in here. It's stretching all this down like that, okay? When it's only supposed to be this wide, it's stretching it all down like that as it pulls all this under. These bulbs are already pulled under and it's pulling the frog under as well. Um, let's see here. Again, we'll go back to this again. This is all the wider that's supposed to be. You see that right there? So this is what you're palpating, okay? Um, and so when you palpate, you have to find not just the digital cushion, but especially the frog stay, especially the frog stay has to be in the correct spot supporting this area right here and keeping it up where it's supposed to be 
because that's the true that's the true foot see otherwise this is just fact you know it it, it it's a cushion you know it's a cushion um and uh this here has to support it up where it's supposed to go so uh let's see here and again here here's between the bulbs is where that grows right in between here right in here so going again going back to that you know see well, that's why i say you have to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth that's a sagittal section and so when you see it wide they're saying that's a healthy digital cushion you do you see why that would be deceiving if you didn't know the truth which they don't okay because they have based their understanding on anatomy on this one foot and so since this one foot of a wild horse that wore its heels out and this is also a back foot by the way okay but it just looked nicer than the front foot so it became the poster child okay because if you look at the front feet on the same horse you're going give i don't know about that okay because you can definitely see that horse had heels that were bent under all right but no not on this little neat number here okay and so then you get this digital cushion this wide digital cushion and this is exactly how he describes that the anatomy is supposed to be he says they should have little to no frog that's what he says that's what jamie jackson says because d used this one foot to describe his anatomy or he uses this foot to describe it so you know i do not agree this is the foot of a wild horse here that's living okay this horse has feet you would not believe all right here's a dead foot that belonged to pete ramey okay uh, well it belonged to the american people right because it's off a wild horse that belonged to the american people and he was given this foot by cheryl henderson and uh who has a bad reputation for being a hoof butcher okay abc hoof care and uh uh she gave him this foot and she did plenty of dissections but see when they put this foot in your head that this is what every foot should look like then when you start cutting those feet open well then you're going to think that's what the true anatomy should be and so what i found interesting was uh on this foot here okay he had it on his page and he said uh feral feral hoof cadaver donated by cheryl henderson but because she got such bad reputation i guess he took the fact that she donated it to him off his page and he also removed uh at least i couldn't find it the fact that it was a feral hoof see why would that be you know well because all feral feet all horses feet are supposed to look like this and the trims that they develop are to make the horse's foot look just like this one and so but that's not the true foot of the horse see yeah uh, we wouldn't be here if we would have found a horse with a foot like that uh you and i'd all have you know good trimmers and uh we'd be off you know spending all that money on a nice vacation or something like that i can think of other things i could be doing okay uh but you know what i hate more than anything i hate lies even if they're unintentional lies or falsehoods or untruths see it is an untruth that every horse should have a foot like that no horse should have a foot like that but their feet adapt to wear like that for survival you know there's a reason why that horse died in that roundup 
God knows what kind of arthritis it probably had by this time and everything else. But it survived till the roundup. Okay. Um, all right. So with that background, okay, and with uh, going to look at our foot again that we started this with, uh, where I show you how uh, horses make their own heel when you cut, when you cut them out. Uh, just a minute here. Got to find the C's and find that, that picture again. Cartilage. Cartilage. Cartilages. 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 Here we go. New share. See, I'm remembering. Okay, so just to reiterate real quick here. Horses are supposed to have heel. Okay. Ooh, look at the hairline. What do you think that did to that digital cushion? Stretched it way down here first, you know. And so uh, remember on that picture we were looking at, how they said, oh, this is a healthy hoof. Look at the hairline. See, they want that hairline to be down there, like that wild horse poster hoof. And so people, a lot of younger people may not understand what that means. <laughs> poster of what you talking about but the older people will right jerry what was his name jerry uh jerry lewis jerry lewis that did the telethon for the march of dimes okay they always had a child a disabled child that was the poster child for the march of dimes you know the representative okay so that's why i call that foot of the barefoot movement, the poster hoof, you know? And so um, we know that their hairline does not go down there. And so here's a wild horse whose heels were totally trimmed out. This is day two, he made some heel and this is day three. How did he make heel? As his foot stood up and was forced up, he pulled this sidewall around underneath and it supported the back of his foot, but it also rounded out his cartilages here as it did here on the third day. See how in three days he developed heel, but we know that's not real heel. But look, now this is part of what they teach, again, is well-developed cartilage. They kind of put it together a lot of times as well-developed digital cushion and well-developed cartilage. OK, you can see that this looks rounder and fuller now, but it's deformed. It's distorted. It's like a squeeze ball. The container has gotten smaller. And so it's squeezed down. And now the inside of this is covered with digital cushion. So what's happening to the digital cushion? You think it might have pressed it up and out more? And so somebody could come along and palpate it. And of course, frog stays virtually none now but the capsule smaller and if you press it's going to seem firm but see true palpation has to understand the role of the frog stay in that area of the foot um let's see here here's the difference this horse frog stay clear up in here supporting between between the bulbs, keeping the bulbs from that and all that by this time. Well, look, you see how if the frog is clear up here in the back of the foot, if the hairline's here, where's the frog? Clear under here, right? All right. That said, let's go do a hoof evaluation. There's so much more. Like, uh, Sonia, if you're listening, I don't know, but in the first of the uh, uh, hoof chat that we we did. What'd you did say? You, did you mean Sophia? So Sophia, yes. Okie dokie. <laughs> Thanks. I'm, you know, I'm in the zone. No, uh, just a minute here. New share. Let's share this. While we're here, we want to look. You know, at this. Okay, so. Here is the cartilage extended. Well, here's the foot. 
here's the cartilage uh, with with or here's the foot without the skin on it. You see the cartilage. Now it naturally wants to curve in anyway. Here it is with its full extension. Here it is pushed in. Um, and the hoof capsule can form fit all of this and keep it contained like that. Now, in this one, I trimmed out the digital cushion, but what's going to happen to the digital cushion if all this is compressed in like that? It's not going to lessen. It's going to be like the squeeze ball. It's going to be pushed up into here or pushed up into the coffin joint. There's the coffin joint right there. Okay. Uh, when the bone is on there, when it's on P2 and all this is pressed in, it rotates the toe down. And uh, that's why you see ski tips on these feet a lot of times because there's so much pressure in the toe. Okay. So. All right, so let's go do the hoof evaluation in light of what we have just been discussing of which uh, I wonder if I have a picture of the inside of that. Well, let's here, I'll look at one more, one more picture to this here, just a second here. I don't think you can look at these too much. Again, this is the foot. This is the digital cushion up here. If I pull all this down and compress everything, it's going to pooch out here. It's going to bulge. It's going to be harder. See? Okay. Um, hold on. I'm getting there. I'm going to close some things out here and uh, go get my pictures that I took under I put them under periable a let's see and the reason I did that was because when I was first looking at that foot and I didn't realize that those marks were from the glue I thought it was from inflammation and the periobal was peeling which I know there's inflammation in those feet um let's see here jk elemental p Periopal, oh, here we go. Do 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 periopal, periopal A2, periopal A1. Okay, okay, so now we're gonna look at this foot in light of that, um, in light of how hoof capsules get smaller when they've been uh, incorrectly trimmed over time and it squeezes all that foot together. So, okay, Sophia uh, asked for opinions on this foot. It said, looking for opinions on my mare's hoof, just pulled Versa Octos off her. She is way more comfortable in them. Definitely think it's due to the angle difference it made on her hinds, and th that probably helped a lot. Um, great digital cushion on all four. I have not yet gotten to map them yet. Hoping I can do that sometime soon. Thanks. Okay, so, so here is right here. New okay. share. Oh, sorry. Oh, I wasn't sharing that. I'm sorry. Okay, let me go back. Okay, this is what I read. Okay, so right away. If you've been looking at these feet long enough, now this would look like a good foot on the surface because look, she's got heel, you know, but this is not the real heel, okay? What this is, this is sidewall heel that's been pulled around under the foot and you see the shape of the cartilage. The shape of the cartilage is not right. It's pulled down and stressed down here as well. Now, uh, let's see the other telltale signs, okay? Um, uh, first of all, you see the way the foot is pooching out up here like that? That is the same squeeze ball thing going on. It's because muffin the, top. <laughs> yeah, muffin top. Muffin top. top. <laughs> <laughs> because the hoof capsule is too small, the, the parts of the foot have to go somewhere. So they push up out the top and they push up out the back. 
Okay, and when we look at this picture here, okay, first of all, we see that the, the skin is the, the bulbs are being pulled down like this. See the wide bulb skin there? That's always a sign of it. This is a horse that is going to really fight having any kind of a low heel too. He, his foot will, will want to stand up no matter what. And so what happens is, what happens is the skin will stretch and grow and they'll wind up with pretty good sized bulbs if the periopal doesn't hold all this under. And, but you see how you could press on that and think there was a good digital cushion there? It looks real full and good, doesn't it? But that is because of the size reduction going on. Okay. Um, okay, same thing here. Um, size reduction in hoof capsule and everything being very compressed. Okay, and right here, okay, see how the bulbs are pulled under the foot? Is this, a, I'm not sure, is this maybe a rear foot? Okay, and the, there is no real frog stay here. The hairline shouldn't be going under like this. So right at this point, she's got false heels that are still needing to be grown in and the frog and frog stay restored to its rightful place. Now in this foot, if you, um, this foot isn't at all, look at the area of the digital cushion here. Okay, it looks sunken in and shallow because this is pulled more underneath. But if we go back to the other foot, see the difference? Now, uh, the other, I believe, is a rear foot, okay? And so uh, that foot has developed a little bit different, but it's still the same. My rear feet now are the same as my front when it comes to, and the foot I was showing you um, that had uh, the really good frog stay, the dissection I did, that is a rear foot, okay? So again, the, the, it, that part of the foot in these horses is not that much different. Now, she said the horse was more comfortable here when she took off some toe because it, it gave him a little different elevation. And so I can understand why that would be. Okay, so look at how the frog has been pulled totally under the foot. You see this here? This is frog stay. Oh, just a minute. Okay, so this frog stay right here should be clear up here behind the foot. See how the bulb skin is pulled under here? And look at the, the, the frog is not healthy at all. It's basically dead. You know, it's, uh, and that's what happens. So these are rear, the rear, is that? The, yeah, right hind, okay. Right hind, um, these heels would be curled around in. But it's deceptive though, you know? Okay, so right here we see evidence. Look at the frog health. See, look at how the walls are curved in like this and like that. So this is false heel. This is not like the real heel buttress um and see it always kills the frog that is the main deal it does it kills the frog and the periopal here will gradually just grow over the whole thing and fill up the central sulcus and why is it doing that it's doing that to keep the foot keep the capsule on the foot because it is the uh, healthy good frog growing up between the bulbs see so that when you palpate it you feel not only a firm digital cushion but you can literally feel that frog stay see with that frog stay up there pushing that digital cushion into place it's going to feel firm but you're going to be able to feel the frog as well so and all of this is inflammation 
when you see this, when you see kind of uh, wide and the brown and stuff like that, that is from inflammation. Um, and it's either going to be a sign of healing or a sign of uh, dis destruction, a uh, sign of inflammation. Okay, here we see, see there is no frog stay at all. Um, uh, the frog has been pulled completely under the foot and the periopal has been pulled down under as well. And this is all going to cover it up and make it into a nice little package. I mean, she does, uh, uh, I mean, it's a decent trimming job. It's just incorrect understanding at this point and reading of the feet. And who could blame anybody for that? Because these feet are so deceptive. See, they're, they've got a million different little versions of themselves, you know. And, uh, of course, these cracks, things like that, that's all, that's all a sign of the same, same thing. So you can see inflammation through there. Linda. What? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Linda. Oh, you're really cutting out, dear. Oh, yeah, you're cutting out way too much for us to understand a word. Understand that maybe sometimes the hoofs look like oh sorry can i go on uh i think you were no, kind of I, I was telling that we look healthy and robust yeah but but they are not correct enough where the the real boundaries are and why? Oh, well, I'm sorry. Like this. Yeah, I'm sorry, but you're cutting out way too much. I'm kind of getting some of what like you're saying. It looks to be a healthy and a strong one is not correct. Yeah, well, well yeah, yes, exactly. So what you're saying is... I, it can look to be healthy and corrected. I'm going to have to stop you because you just are not understandable at this point. So, it, I mean, you are just cutting out so bad, dear, that uh, it's not, you. we can't understand hardly a word. Um, I think what she was trying to say, a healthy, see, it's very deceptive. That A, that a, a foot can look healthy and robust but still be not anatomically correct, okay? But we know that this horse already has problems because Sophia has said that this horse is more comfortable in the shoes, okay? And so um, we're not against yeah. shoes in any way, shape, or form, but uh, uh, we know that when a horse's feet are totally correct, that they can go without them, right? Okay, so when I look at this foot here, I definitely see serious problems. Okay, so uh, just a minute. I'm going to have to mute you. You if have I can. I. Okay, I'm asking you to, to mute because uh, you are coming in so bad that uh, we cannot get hardly uh, two words. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so this foot definitely looks diseased and it, it also looked not diseased, but. Sorry, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hey, um, I'm only just joining because it's like five in the morning. <laughs> So I've missed most of it. But why are you talking about this? How do you grow a frog stay? Because I have the same in my horse. He has no frog stays at all. The heels are so contracted. The bulbs are touching. Um, they're very unhealthy. And I, I don't know how to go about 
helping him to grow a frog stay again. Okay. Okay. Well, um, uh, I'll talk about that when I get done with this part here. Okay. okay? Okay, because yeah, it's very important, and I'll show you also something that happened to Mamie Man that we've been dealing with for a long time. That was very happy, um, and her horse was the same way, no frog stay, you know. So, um, okay, so you see here, you see this periopal. This periopal is going to take is taken over and probably has taken over this whole thing. This frog stay right here that's underneath the foot and flat should be up behind the foot. See, it's like uh, let me let me annotate and draw this out for you. So, like this is underneath the foot. Okay, so if the foot was setting down. It'd be like this. It'd be like this. Okay. And when it's supposed to be uh, up behind the foot, like this. Okay. This part is, this part, this whole piece here is supposed to be vertical, not horizontal. And so, since that's been pulled under, you know, I can see why the horse would be more comfortable with shoes. Um, and so this periopal here is pulled under the foot. See? And eventually it'll just grow over the whole frog like this. The piece of periopal here is going to fill in the whole central sulcus. And it does this to keep the capsule on the foot. Um, see, and, and just see the dark color and you can tell the, the whatever frog is there is not healthy. And even um, just the type of exfoliatable sole that's there is from the foot being bent and constricted. And so uh, first order of business is to start getting a healthy frog by starting to trim it you know, and getting it really cleaned up. Um, that would be the first order of business because healthy frog, healthy foot. And Linda, it is how much of that, I'm sorry to interrupt, how much of that frog would you take off at one time? And the periopal, because that's a lot of periopal. I'd be afraid to release that too soon all at once. Yeah, you, you wouldn't want to take a lot off of here. Okay, right in here. But you can trim up a lot of this frog you want to trim down to clean frog you want to clean this up real good and get all the dead stuff off you know that's that's a first step first of all you're just going to start growing your heel remember you do not bevel your heel from here to here this part here forward you gets beveled because you want to weight this part of the heel okay so that it will start adding capsule in to raise up the whole back of the foot. So it's a matter of trimming up the frog, getting the frog healthy, um, uh, and then growing heel to, to enlarge the capsule that will lift the whole back of the foot back up. Would, would you take off any of that periopal where you can actually see that it's curved in? Um, I, I think you could clean a lot of this up. Okay. You know, like, like the collateral groove exit, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And, and this along the sides of the frog, really the whole frog, everything, central sulcus, it all needs to be cleaned up. So you know what you're dealing with. See, the reason that you get so much of this exfoliatable sole, see, I'll bet you anything that the farrier or trimmer who did her for a couple sessions trimmed the heck out of her heels. You know what? I'll just bet you. And uh, that's probably why she looks like she has heels, even. Because um, she's fighting to get elevated again. You know, 
And so that would also be why we're seeing so much exfoliatable soul because it's bending the whole foot and it's it it just causes it causes that it causes that strange odd over exfoliation of soul um because it's killing soul for one thing it's detach it detaches stuff you know uh uh it's all one uh well it's two units your foot and your capsule but when all that's moved stuff detaches things come loose say mm -hmm. and then they have to grow again and so that's why you get this this really excessive uh exfoliatable soul here that i'm seeing so well would you take and all she of had off at the same time too or do you see i'm always leery of doing too much too soon and letting the whole foot just sort of like collapse in on itself if that makes sense yeah, and I just I always realized, err on the side of caution, but I think I would have more progress if I sometimes didn't. Yeah, um, you know, uh, I'd have to have foot in hand to always be able to tell you exactly what to do there. You know, you just have to kind of use some of your own judgment on that. And also, I just realized she just took the shoes off this horse. So that could also be the reason some of that soul is there like that, because the horse was never so that could be see me wrongly interpreting that you see that okay i had to remember I, oh, wait a minute she had shoes on what huh oh can i ask something about the frog what i've noticed with mine is that um i've i've trimmed their frogs the first time and under the central sulcus there is um white like almost milky white really really soft stuff coming out is that the frog itself or is that thrush um, it's almost mi like milk colored like white milk is it colored thick? and it's thick so, is it thicker it's uh, mm, it's so like, soft i can almost scrape it with a toothpick okay i i think that's periopal right okay yeah i think that's periopal so it's coming out under the periopal pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I've and I've it's found really it white um, and soft. I've found it uh where it was almost mixed with some blood sometimes to where it was pink and like okay. like mush almost. But uh I've never seen the white stuff, but I have uh, a video of a guy that was ramping heels and he totally stripped the frog the the frog stay out of this horse's foot and he was getting that white stuff and i've seen other people get the white stuff but i have never gotten exactly that so would you trim that or would you leave it no i would imagine if it comes off you could take it off okay you know i have it in a few of my horse's feet now because they were hard and I trimmed the periopal back and some of the spots it's got now this white stuff. Yeah, and I it's think it's really the, mid colored and really, really soft. Like you almost scrape it just with a hoof pick. You don't even need a well, knife for it. Well, see, um, if there was moisture in there, moisture will sometimes turn the periopal to mush. Uh yeah, see my horse's feet are always wet. Okay, there you go. Um, because like on my pony. I had never really booted her back feet. I was focusing more on the front feet and trying to fix them. And because I severely trimmed her into mechanically laminitis using barefoot principles. The um, And mm. so uh, I put some boots on her back feet and um, and had moisturizers on them for, oh, good couple weeks. And when I went to trim them, and I went and I put my finger alongside the frog. It 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 was mush. It was just mush yeah. because it was periopal. Right. And I've got those uh, mushy, mushy yeah. grooves. I can she scrape it out with a hoof peak. Yep. Yep. It turns into mush. Okay. It's yep. like a cuticle. You yeah. know, it's just like okay. that. It's hard as a rock. It can be harder than hoof wall. But when it gets wet. It expands and it can turn to total mush. Like um, a number of years ago, I did this deal 
where I booted my pony and um, I mixed up a concoction. Uh, well, I read what they put in stuff that um, you take your, like the calluses off your skin with. And then I tried to mimic that, you know, put all this stuff on it. And then I put these little boots on her for a couple of days. And when I took them off, you could just wipe it off. Like, yeah, it was like butter, you know, or like yeah, almost like an applesauce consistency. Yeah. 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 It, is a, it Actually, like it is so soft. It just comes right off. And I got yeah. really scared that I've gone too deep. Yeah. And no, no, no. Or something. <laughs> no, it's just periopal. That's okay. how deep that periopal grows. Like you were trimming off the top. Okay. And that allowed moisture to get under to the rest of it. And that's what it turns into. Right. You know, yeah, it's, a, it's it's an amazing stuff. Out. Yeah. It's an amazing stuff. Okay. okay cool. Let's see. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay. So here you can really see how the frog has been pulled under. Look at the frog too. That's either frog tubules or that's probably periopal tubules that you're looking at. See how it looks fuzzy? And I don't know if any of you have seen it, but I've seen it where the central sulcus looks like a hole and it looks like it almost has hair in it. Has anybody ever seen that? Everybody goes, no. <laughs> but yes, uh, my, my horse's feet are like that. Oh, okay. Because they're, because they're wet so much. Mm -hmm. A lot of their sank, sank, uh, central sulcuses are hairy like this. Yeah, so you're like not that. supposed to be that way. So that would either be periopal tubules because it is tubules, but uh, the frog is also tubules. Let's see, everything's tubules on these feet. Keratin. Um, so yeah, the, the, you see how the bulbs are pulled under? Um, okay, so she had x-rays taken and she was told, and well, she, because of her own dissections and her own understanding, which probably comes from barefoot trimming, as all of ours did, as used to be my understanding as well, okay, um, have been told when you feel that or palpate that or it's like that, that that's a healthy digital cushion. But I've explained why. Well, yeah, the horse probably does have a healthy digital cushion, but it's all in the wrong spot. And what when you palpate that area, you have to also palpate for the frog stay because there is the 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 digital cushion should only in the center should only be this wide. OK, and uh, when it's pulled all the way down, uh, that's that's distortion because there is a frog that grows between the bulbs that supports the whole digital cushion. Now, when I look at this, first the thing I see here, and she said she had this done a couple months ago, um, is I see a ground parallel coffin bone. That tells me right there, um, and I'm kind of looking up here and I kind of see the angle. What is this foot? Oh, this is a hind. I was going to say it's a hind. So the angle of the hairline is going pretty much down. And we know that in those hind feet that the bulbs were clear underneath. Now, when you see this arch here in the bottom of the collateral groove, it should not be directly under the coffin bone. It should be more back like this. Now, to prove that, uh, I'm going to show you a picture of a perfectly healthy x-ray of a perfectly anatomically correct foot well it's close as what we can get to right now um just a minute here oh okay. linda i just have to say that this is a brilliant brilliant hoof chat Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dare. Um, okay, I'm gonna gonna new share. Okay, so this is Chester. Now, this is five weeks post trim on his foot here. And so the toe could come down some, you know what I mean? Um, his heels fitted in from his last trim when he hadn't been trimmed for nine months, eight months. And 
Um, but then now here the toe is a little long, but this is five weeks. And so so if we were to just take the toe down a little bit, you'd, you'd almost see a perfect foot there. Um, I should show you the sole view of this horse's foot. Uh, but here's the here's the x-ray of his foot. Now I want you to look at where the bottom of the collateral groove arches right here. Okay, and now we're going to look at, uh, I'm going to take a picture of her horse's foot and this one. A second here. Um, where are you? Oh, 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 there you go. Just a minute. Because I'll have to take a picture of these two together to show it to you. And uh, they're going to be kind of reversed. So, wait a minute. This is a perfect hoof chat, Linda, because these two x-rays just explain the physics of what I was asking you earlier of how the, how the coffin bone gets tilted down. I can see that now perfectly. Oh, okay, good. Um, let's see here. Okay, I got to take a picture. Sorry. Screenshot. Okay. Oop -de -doop -de -doop. Okay, new share. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so here's her horse. I just want you to see how low this is. Just a minute. I need to annotate. Um, da -dum, da -dum. Annotate, draw. Okay, let's do, let's do red. All right, see how low this is? Now, now it goes clear down here. See that? Okay, see how much this is a little higher? Now it does go a little extended over here, but I also want you to notice the difference in the shape, how this is up higher. And this one is down lower. See how the, the foot has been pulled down like that? And what has resulted in, also look at this. See, in anatomy, an inch is a lot, OK? Uh, if you cut your fingernails an inch too short, you're going to cut off your fingernail, right? OK, so look at the angle of the coffin bone. And this is why our horse is also more comfortable with shoes on. It gives him some more support, you know. And when she lowered the toe, she said she lowered the toe and she felt he felt more comfortable. That's because it changed the angle of the coffin bone. Because his the whole back of his foot has been stretched and pulled down under here. Now, you have to remember that this digital cushion is being supported by a big frog stay that's up between the bulbs like that big frog okay whereas uh this 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 horse's frog stay is clear down here okay but this is a back foot too this is not the one i don't think this is the one she said had healthy digital cushions i think she she meant that on the front feet but still Okay, let's see. Let me clear clear all this. Um, so let's go back to the x-rays. Just a minute here. And new screen share. So I'm looking forward. Um, okay, I think I got it. I'm lost in Windows land here. Just a minute. Oh, I got to close out a picture. Hold on. Do you want to say yes? Okay. Let's 
see here. Okay. Do, 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 do. Had to find myself new share. Here we go. Okay. So that was uh that was the right hind. Okay, which is a left hind and left hind, front left, right, right hind. Here's the right hind. This is that foot there. Right hind, that's that foot there, right hind. Cool. Um, <clears throat> okay, so go back to the x-rays. This is the right front. Okay, now not as quite ground parallel, um, but yet look at how this is all pulled down and under, under here. Now this could be old, this is, I believe, old frog, dead frog under here. <clears throat> now the good thing is she didn't have any remodeling in her coffin bone at all. And her coffin bone is in, uh, the toe of the coffin bone is in uh, the groove where it's supposed to be. Now, um, when you're looking at these x-rays, okay, I, can you see the shadow here around the toe? Just the slight discoloration? Yes. Yes. Okay, this is the lamina. This is the two laminas right here and this is where uh, the soul is and so um here let me draw this out just a second here um draw in red i need more narrow okay so you got your soul corium right that covers the bone which would be soul corium well lamina this would be the lamina and then the sole corium starts up here about like so a minute okay and so then you see the shadow what you're seeing here is is the lamina Two laminas together here, and then the sole ridge starting to grow here, and it nestles this the toe in this form fitted little dish here, all around the perimeter of the sole, and then the sole ridge. There's the wall, and here's your soul ridge right here. So she has, because the walls are nice and tight up here. See, this is very, very important. And because, and you always want to look for this in x-rays, this little shadow around here. Is it is the toe fitting in that shadow, or is it displaced? Like a lot of times, you'll see the shadow up here and the toe over here, and you'll see the ski tip. But as long as these toes are resting in this form fitted where the wall comes down and the sole starts to grow and you got this little dish here, as long as this is all in one unit and together, you won't get that remodeling in the toe. When all this stretches out and that toe is setting on just flat sole, that's when you start to get those ski tips you see so often. Like my horse has ski tips and stuff, but hers doesn't. So this is very important. This is very, very good. Okay. Clear all drawings. All right. Let's see here. Close that out. Make that larger. So um, good here is that um, she's got some elevation of the coffin bone. It's not ground parallel, um, that the frogs are very unhealthy and that the foot has been wrapped around behind and, and the heels trimmed out, but it don't look like it. 
because the horse looks like she has heels. But the real heels would be further back. I'll do a drawing here on that in a minute. Um, let's see here. Let me move this thing here. Let's go. Okay, now that's the left front and this is the right front. Now, I want you to notice the difference in the shape of the back of the foot. See, that's, that's almost like she's got one high, uh, high low. Um, uh, look at the angle of the coffin bone in this foot and just the shape of the back of the foot. Look at the coffin bone. This is at a steeper angle. Now look at the shape. Look at the shape, how this is more compressed and pulled around under here. So what's going on here is all this anatomy and all this digital cushion that's being squeezed is pushing up into this joint here and it's pushing it forward, okay? And it's pushing the toe down and you can just see the very start of a ski tip on the end of this coffin bone. Do you see it? Right there, it's it's not out of this groove yet, but what's happening is because all this is so compressed, all this anatomy and digital cushion is being so, because the hoof capsule is too small, it's being so pushed up into this joint and pushing it forward. Well, when you push this joint forward, what happens to this part of the coffin bone? It's gonna push it uh, down. See, and so the, the, the toe is being pushed down and it's just, just starting to form a ski tip because of the pressure on the toe. So um, that, that would come to an end if uh, this was all released and the, the true heel brought in. Again, you see all this muck in here. That's uh, probably dead. That's probably your dead uh, frog stay. Because like I said, on the back feet of my pony, when I did that, when I um, put the boots on and soaked them and, and then I wiped that, that periopal off, you know what was underneath? Hard, dead frog. Why should there be hard, dead frog under what I thought was frog? Right? Because it wasn't frog. It was periopal. That periopal can cover the whole foot. Um, gets thicker. It gets thicker and it will cover the whole foot. It's trying to save the horse. Okay, so here's the left hind. Again, um, we have ground parallel coffin bone. And so that's why when she gets a little more elevated, the horse is more comfortable. And here, yeah, there's just no frog. No frog at all, no real frog at all. It's all been pulled totally down under the foot. And that would mean probably that the heels were crushed as well, the internal heel, but that can all still, you know, be fixed. Again, can you see the little shadow here? Okay. Um, anyway. Um, this is just a, a whole different picture. Here's my horse a while back, could have been several years. And what I want to show you here, since the picture popped up, is how these are false heels and there is no frog stay here. It's pulled clear under the foot and look at how wide the bulbs are and the periopal skin. Because a lot of times this part of the foot doesn't want to be held down. And so it stretches back up, but the periopal is attached down here. And so as it stretches back up, the periopal just grows and, and the foot rises up. And you wind up with these feet, with these humongous bulbs. See, in reality, your, your bulb, your periopal skin should not be any wider than that. And so if we go back now, we're gonna look at a front foot. See how the bulb skin is being stretched on her horse right here. Um, uh, she's got a strong foot, inner foot, 
and a strong digital cushion. She does have a strong digital cushion. And so it wants to pull back up is what it's doing. And so as it does so, it's leaving this periopal, which is attached down here, because periopal is part of the hoof capsule, but it grows from the foot. And so as the foot stretches up, um, um, because that's where it wants to be, uh, it will grow huge. The skin also grows and you'll get these big bulbs. Okay, so uh, in reality, your her heels are probably just this long, which however long it is, but this is not true heel. But also, I want you to see how the heels are curved in. See, this horse makes his own heels by pulling his foot up and by curling his, his sidewall underneath the back of his foot. So he has some elevation. Let's look at this, turn it around. That's the front left. And that is the front left. So let's look at this. Okay, see the condition of the frog? See the split? Okay, see this skin right here? That's periopal skin underneath the foot. That's the whole thing. Periopal is not supposed to be underneath the foot. Um, let me find, here we go. Okay, uh, new share, do I need? Okay, let's, let's uh, look at this again. I want you to look right here. This periopal skin is meant to crown the foot. It's a crown. It is not meant to go under the foot at all. The only time it goes under, the only time it comes down <laughs> is when the foot's in trouble and needs to be saved. And then it goes to work to grow in all kinds of different ways to keep that capsule on the foot and try and help the horse survive. So when you see any of this periopal underneath okay that is hoof distortion that means the heels are not correct supporting the foot that somehow they're being worn pulled under something like that and so uh let's see here this is my exact problem but do i cut the periopal do i what, what do i do well, you just start doing, uh, uh, start be doing consistent trims and uh, you start keeping the frog trimmed because eventually it's going to, uh, your foot's going to grow. The periopal is going to realize maybe it doesn't need to grow over all that. You'll wind up getting through. It, it just takes time and consistent trimming. And as you learn these things and start to recognize these things, you know, trimming up the frog, getting the periopal off slowly and gradually, letting the foot expand, growing in the heels. It just really takes time. And it's a little bit of all these things. Um, that's what you do. See? Uh, you know, we teach like a consistent trim with the mapping is a big part of it. Um, but trimming up that frog, moisture is good. But you said it was wet where you're at. Was it you that said it was wet or somebody else? Usually it's it's wet because I live in a rainforest. But right oh, now it's well. super dry. And <laughs> yeah, right now it is super dry. And when I did his feet, they're like hard as marble. Oh, and his like if I sent you a picture, you'd be like, oh, this is exactly what this is because he is he is right. Like everything's right underneath the foot. And I'm like, this looks weird. So I was trying to trim the frog and then my knife skipped bad mummy. And so I actually cut him in the leg oh. because the frog. <laughs> I know I felt, oh, God, he was leaking everywhere. I was like, oh, my God, I'm so bad. Um, but the frog is so incredibly hard. And, yeah, and, but it's not because it's periopal, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, so that's, frog itself can be hard, but periopal is even harder. It's insane. Like, I cannot do it. So that's why I was yeah. thinking of getting a dr Dremel, Dremel and, and just, just taking off it. layers. Yeah. And uh, make some boots and soak his feet. Okay. You know, um, that's one good way to do it. You know, you put a boot on there. Like, what I do is um, I put a sock on. Then I put a plastic bag over that and, uh, you know, like a baggie, but I cut the, the, the zip 
lock part off. Yeah. And then I secure that around the pastern with duct tape. And then I put another sock over it or a couple socks. And but I fill up the original sock and stuff with um with uh, some conditioner, something with conditioner or something in it. Okay, and uh, leave that on there. Heck, you leave it on there for a week. You know, uh, uh, get that foot soft. You know, well, okay. maybe maybe not a week considering what your foot horse's foot shape in, but I'd say leave it on a day or two and then check it out and uh, see if it's easier to cut. Okay. That's what I do. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. So again, I just want you to look at the periopal because peri means around. Opal is hoof. Okay. So periopal around the hoof. It's not supposed to be under the hoof. The crown sits on top of the head, right? Um, so this crowns the foot. It connects the hoof capsule to the skin up here on the leg. This is periopal corium that you see right here that grows the periopal. And that's what attaches the caps of the leg. And so when the heels are being trimmed out, when all this is being pulled under, you're creating a situation that's pulling the capsule off the foot. And the periopal goes to work to cover to, it. It shoots over the frog. And it, it covers everything and and holds that capsule on the foot. And that is why we want to grow in some capsule before we just relieve every bit of periopal and all that. OK. Um, so, you know, uh, like trim your frog, get moisture, you know, but also you you do this in conjunction with growth and stuff like that because this is a growing process and a restoring process okay um where was i okay so now showing you where the periopal should be not under the foot it's vertical it's not horizontal when it's horizontal that's incorrect you see how on this foot it's starting to go horizontal under here see but on this horse, it's up here. And I can tell you, too, that his heels were a little bit incorrect and stuff. Because uh, when I took the foot out, all right, um, the foot wanted to set a little higher right here when I put it back in, simply because it was pulled down a bit in back. But really, this is the most perfect periopal. Um, I, well, that one on that other foot was probably good too, but I, I did that other foot before I knew what, what was what here. Okay, so now let me go back to, uh, I believe it was this foot, just a minute, new share. Okay, so this is front left okay so but you see how dead the frog is because and that's probably periopal even it may not even be frog at all um uh it's a, and then it can be a mixture and how it does that i don't even know but uh uh look at the heels how they're curled in see that is not real heel buttress that is only sidewall um, I think the real heel buttress has been trimmed out. It's probably buried under there somewhere and not growing anything, you know. Um, uh, so look at the little crack right there. So you've got uh, kind of a distorted, deformed bar along with sidewall that is imitating heel buttress. You know, so these would be fake heels, especially you see the way they're turned in like that. That horse just pulled the sidewall right in like that. And, uh, you know, I can't remember all my uh, conversation with Sophia, but like me, she was probably introduced to barefoot trimming and all the trimmings, <laughs> you know, which comes with the understanding of the anatomy that's not right. And I mean, all this other stuff. And so it's really a head adjustment to to have to change horses 
change trims in midstream, so to speak. Now, can you see that? Now, now, do you see also the separation in the wall here? This is because the foot is being compressed and there is so much inflammation inside the foot. And then look at the periopal pulled under here. Say under the foot. Uh, yeah, so anyway, um, so that's kind of where we're at there. Uh, you know, the, the feet even look sore to me. Once you have seen uh, good feet uh, and then you see this, you know that there's inflammation because everything's just being so squeezed. And so, right hind, let me go forward, find some more. Oops, I'm running out of space here. Let me go back. See, these feet are way deceiving because this horse makes his own heels. That means he does have very strong cartilages, or she has very strong cartilages. But look here, you see this? You see the strain being put? I don't know if that's a ligament or a tendon. Okay, you smarter people. What is that? <laughs> you smarter people. Whatever it is, <laughs> I can't remember. But you see the strain on it. You'll see that a lot. You'll see these, these um, whether it's a ligament or a tendon, you'll see a real strain put on them when uh, you've got foot binding, where the capsule is smaller than uh the, than it's supposed to be, and it's compressing and binding and squeezing the foot. Well, just like if uh, you wear a size uh, seven sh or size uh, nine shoe, but you're forced into a size seven, you know, what is it going to strain in your legs? You know what I mean? So, uh, I'm going to annotate here and I'm just going to draw what I think might be more of the foot once it is enlarged. See, that's what happened to me. Okay, so I bought these soaking boots years ago to soak my horse's feet in. They're like easy boot soakers or something. And then after I'd been the restoring the heels for a while, I went to use them and they wouldn't fit. Because the size of my horse's feet had changed that much. Because, you know, them soaking boots are always a little loose anyway, right? I couldn't even get them on. So, just a second here. Blue, and we'll go for a big app. Okay, so, first of all, the hairline would be straighter. And that is the extensor branch of the suspensory ligament. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> so. We're going to give him some more soul. Her, her. Okay. Linda, this... can, can I tell you something real quick? Sh sure. Um, so I started tacked on my, uh, 17 hand warm blood and I had purchased Cavallo, new Cavallos for her, uh -huh. um, to, because she has no heels and, uh, literally a month, her feet got so big that the Cavallos don't fit. <laughs> oh, wow. So that's like, you know, $500 down the tube, but it's really cool to see that her feet expanded in a month like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, anyway, somebody's calling me. That's all I had. Oh, hold on a second, please.
Okay, that was my son. Um, that was Joella, right? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. See. Well, maybe you can sell them. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> what size are they? Uh, six. Is that a pretty good size? That's pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty big. Well, you know what? They if you want to put an ad on the on the group page or something, feel free. Well, thank you. That's super sweet of you. You know, because there might be somebody that need those until they get their horse's feet going, or even if they had a, a, a smaller size, because then you could use those. You could put a sock on and a bag with another sock and fill it and use them for moisturizing the feet. Yeah, that's a that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So anyway, that's the end of this evaluation. Now, what would you do? Well, the same thing we do uh, for everything. We start by cleaning up that frog, you know, cleaning up that frog, getting that frog healthy um, to start releasing the back of the foot. And uh, uh, that, I mean, I don't think it would take much to get these feet to expand. Um, the horse does have a very strong digital cushion. I mean, she is totally right. She, this horse has great digital cushion and he's got great cartilages. She, or yeah, I think it was a she, um, but he also needs a good frog stay, you know, and he needs uh, the foot to be released so the horse can have the true size to her foot. And then in the back, more heel, obviously to elevate the foot and to get that that frog and periopal to raise back up behind the foot instead of being pulled on, down underneath so you know see that's a bad part about barefoot trimming uh amongst many things but uh one of the main things is oh never trim the frog well and and because they don't trim the frog then then uh everything just dies and holds that foot right there and so everybody is um it deceives people into thinking uh that the foot is good or whatever i don't know but okay um now uh before we go anywhere else i need to go look at do to do to do to do or somebody's horse's feet i needed to look at was it elena's elena i think Oh, okay. Um, but, uh, Linda, it's not so urgent. So if you don't have time for that, it's well, absolutely. It's only 3.15. <laughs> so we can do that. Not you dinner know. time yet, right? It's not dinner time yet. It's not time to feed. Linda? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, for next time, could you have a look at my Phillies fate? Well, um, why don't we trimming... just do it now? <laughs> it's just because she's got she's presenting pitch and towing and I've been trying to wrap my head around how does the foot grow to okay. pitch and toe well, she, isn't, she wasn't born with it it's nope. just that her capture is yeah. well can I interfere? So far. Can yeah. I interfere? oh go right the ahead horse that, the, the horse that I sent to you the owner complained that she started to do pitch and toe Oh, interesting. All right. Cool. So we so will it's connected. It, it is connected with the, I think the feet. It could be yeah. I mean, how they get deformed. Okay. So this is cool. We can... I asked I ask the owner for um, uh, x-rays and for all the information. So I'll just present it later to you. Okay. Um, I just got a message from uh, Leah. Hi, I'm here. I sent you out just because it was relevant to what you were showing. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm and trying to find I, it now. I I saw, I just did this today. You know, I put an old picture of my gelding's hoof on top of the roast recent. And I was so impressed and amazed how much it had expanded that I thought that it would be nice for everybody to see. And it's still, yes. not, still not perfect. Yes. But incredible. And I just clicked on some link and it took me somewhere and now I'm lost in Windows land. Just a second here. Let me close out some of these pictures so I can find out where I'm at. Holy Hannah, got a lot of boxes open. So get that one. 
Um, let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. We'll get that one. Right out loud. Yeah, Just jump in and say hi, everybody from Paris. This is Simone. Hey, hi. Hello. Hi. Finally. Finally. <laughs> you were wondering <laughs> where you were. Uh, I'm in Paris. I'm on a holiday with the kids. We're going to Disneyland, the Europe Disneyland. Oh, lovely. Oh, well, that would be fun. Yeah, okay. I hope so. Okay, well, this is amazing. Okay, yeah, so even if we next time have a look at that, I just try to understand the function of pigeon towing because I know she wasn't born like this. She's not two and a half. And well, her foot has actually expanded since I started trimming the frog, but the whole capture has turned and I'm, I just don't understand how to trim it. It's doing my head in. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. It doesn't matter. I mean, we're here, you know. Um, but we're going to look and see how this foot has expanded, which is really amazing. Just a minute here, though. Uh, now I've lost. Okay. Leah sent this. Okay. Do you want to introduce this, Leah? You have to share it, Linda. We can't oh, see. Oh, okay. Yeah. New share. Wow. Cool way to do it. Yeah. So the one in behind is the, the most recent photo. I took it on uh, Saturday. And the one on top is uh, about six months ago or something like that. And, and I actually lined up the, the fetlock. And so it is the same. I mean, that is how much the hoop has expanded. It's not that one picture is smaller than the other. And just wow. it's incredible. You can see. Look, in the front and at the back, and it's still a bit underrun, the heel. I'm still waiting for it, you know, to, to, to stand up a bit more. And I think he's a bit too long in the toe, but um, I'm working on it. But hey. I, 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 today, just, you know, I was playing around with this, with the, with this app, and, and I put it on top, and I, I couldn't believe it. I thought, oh, and I had to show you all, because it's really... <laughs> Man, it's wonderful. When you draw it, Linda, you draw it with a with a pen, you know, and and we can imagine it. But this is actually this is yeah, this is fabulous. Look at the wow, back, the, back, the cartilage at the back. How much it has expanded at the back? Oh man, wow. Well, this yeah, it just makes total sense. But this uh, this app and this picture is absolutely astounding. And so you know when when uh. Uh, when people look and stuff, they can then imagine, well, yes, my horse's foot actually can expand that much. See, what app is that? Well, it's it's an it's an app. It's an I can uh, it's called the one that I you remember that video that I showed you that it did that it kept changing from. Well, I, I was going to do a video of that, you know, just to see the change of the hoop. And then I decided just to put a picture on top. So yeah. They, you could really see the change oh wow well, yeah it, it's called bazaar and and you can just play around put a picture uh, cut away the background so that you can only see the, the hoof and then you put another picture on top and then you can change the opacity you know if you put it on top so that you can put it in exactly the same position and and i, I just was playing around with it today and then i saw this and i, I couldn't believe it <laughs> man this is wonderful what app is that? It's called Bazaar. I'm going to write it down in the chat. Okay. Would you send it to me a messenger too? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go look. Is the past and expanded as well? And the fetlock? No. In the back the there? Size, it's the same size. Oh, changed. That hasn't changed. Oh, okay. So just it's just the foot itself. Wow, it's amazing. Yes, there's, wow. There's more hairs in the one behind, so that's why that black part of the part of the the fetlock on behind it looks bigger, but it isn't. It's exactly the same size. Wow. Okay, I can just stare at it, you know. Yes, yeah, so I'm amazed by it. And, and that, that is the coolest there. app. I gotta save that. Okay. I'll put your name on it. Well, this is my 
my 22 year old gelding that has had his heels cut out all his life but really really right down and he's been lame the poor thing every time the the, the trimmer came uh -huh. uh, he, he 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 had to lie down because he couldn't stand on his own feet it was horrible wow and, um and now he's he's much better good Quietest in, in this in this hand but um but he i mean the changes in his hooves are incredible i'll send you more pictures there when i carry on playing around i'll send you more pictures okay that would be fabulous that would be fabulous and you see how uh his old foot here i mean i mean you could you could uh trim that thing up to look all nifty you know what i mean but he'd still be crippled yes yeah see isn't it deceptive what i say an inch the how much a difference an inch makes and you know that inch starts with that inch of heel buttress which is well actually there's about two inches of full heel buttress along the back of the foot and then the sole you know but just trimming an inch out of that heel can destroy the whole foot and change the whole the dynamics of the whole foot okay all right well uh, okay i'm going to go to messenger and let's see here find da, 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 da. here we go let me enlarge this hold on go do do why aren't you working open messenger app okay so we're going to do these two young horses that seem to go be going pigeon toed um messengers acting weird on me do you want me to send you any more photos or uh Have you well got enough uh just a minute because something ain't working out right so uh -huh. it's not letting me do what i wanted to do so i'm going to close out some stuff here and uh reopen facebook just wasn't letting me into messenger for some reason so usually um, of course, trim history on these two horses. Like, what's the trim history on this horse? Um, just a minute here. Okay, going to screen share. Hold on. Screen share. Wow. Well, looks like this part of the foot is just kind of taken over here. Okay. Well, here we are. Do you want to explain? Tell me what I'm looking at. What horse? Whose horse is this? Hello. Can you see that? Everybody see that picture? Yes. Yes, we can see it. I'm back. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I wondered where you went. I, no, because I'm at the same time I'm working and my hands are covered in clay and I oh. had to clean them. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Here I am. Okay, so whose horse is this and how old a horse is this? And I think the horse is about eight and it's a Pierre mare. Uh, lives in uh, Sweden. Mm -hmm. Quite wet climate okay and, uh, always had uh, uh problematic feet and the girl went to she just feels i think really bad and i feel i just told her that it's absolutely normal but we all went through similar emotions mm -hmm. and um she went to her um, uh, trim school and basically it didn't solve the problem uh-huh so 
and okay. uh, she was running away from this problem and i just grabbed her and i said we can do it together i will yeah. help you just you know relax everything <laughs> we yeah. have a good group of people but i thought you know she will get to the stage when she will be able to join us but i think she needs to do some emotional processing yeah for that <laughs> well she got a good start here you know yeah. and stuff and uh you know uh she got a good start there i'd say uh-huh yeah that's she's getting a good start okay okay that frog looks great yeah. She trimmed that up nice bars look good and actually uh other than the fact that the the sidewall and the horn tubules in the side have grown forward and there's some distortion there um this is not as bad a foot as what it looks well she's concerned that uh the toe is running away but i told her as you are telling also that she shouldn't touch the toe because when she will address the back then the toe you know slowly slowly gradually it will sort itself out right yeah but also look at the back of her foot and her cartilage it, it doesn't it's very look, nice That's it's very I nice thought. it's not bad at all um no. and she's got a really good good frog uh she's got very little to no real periopal pulled underneath at all let me uh save this image um just a minute It'll pop up here and I'll be able to enlarge well, it. Well, this horse, uh, they actually were considering to put her down because she has keratoma uh -huh. in one of her feet. And uh, she has calcifications also. But okay. I told her that when she will be able to work on the heels and bring and make the heels healthy, then it will make the horse much much more comfortable anyway yeah, yeah so, absolutely and, and i uh, think it might be also that keratoma happened because of the bad trim because yeah. there was mechanical pressure on the toe yeah stop because of the, the toe area and i'm just thinking because the leverage was she was so run forward with the heels and under run yeah that uh it the leverage and we you were talking about the forces were so strong that mechanically it created this yeah uh, unfortunately this pathology yeah and um uh in that last trim i did she could watch that and know how to start backing that toe up the toe is a little okay. stretched forward but she could back it up pretty easy Okay, and so uh, it's the, the last trim you did on YouTube. Yeah. I will yeah, I will send it to her. Okay. Yeah. Great. And um, she'd have to go to the end of that uh hoof chat to watch it. You know, that okay. hoof chat was about four hours long, shorter than this <laughs> one. Uh okay. Linda, it, yeah. where would you take that toe to? Uh, well, I would find the true apex of the frog here and then measure an inch and a half forward or, you know, and see where the toe was first. And then uh, I would mark that and then I would back. If I didn't back up to that, I would I would go a little ahead of that and then maybe within a couple trims come there. So. Okay. Would, would, would you, if it measures out, if it measured um one and a half well behind <clears throat> the the white line would yeah, you, which would you I, bevel into the white line past the white i have line? before because you know well, I but know i don't always you think do you that. should do that what you could do is you could just bevel up you could just bevel up to what's here like like find where the white line is okay maybe scribe out the toe there a little bit and then bevel back to that and uh you know and then blend your pillars in here and then wait for all that to move back because it will because it's being forced forward so it wants to come back anyway so you just got to create a new boundary for all that for it to all suck up 
And then when it all sucks up and it looks like your hoof wall grows, you could do it again. You could bevel across, come back a little more, bevel across, blend in, you know, do your bevel and well, then do it the, in stages. The reason I'm asking is because I know before, like in a, a, a year ago, maybe two years ago, um, uh -huh. you would have said, yeah, start there and go like, you know, from an inch and a half forward. But in the last couple of trims, I've seen it sort of seems like you pulled back from that a little. And I'm wondering if I'm interpreting what you're saying incorrectly or if you still No, advise. you're right. Oh, you're right. I have pulled back from that. Um, Is there a reason for that? Well, because, because, because mechanically, I don't think the toe can back up. I, and I, I, I don't want to make a horse sore. And I right. think it would make a horse sore to just remove all leverage from the wall. It makes in the, the horse dorsal. sore. Uh, there we go. Proof. Proof it out of the horse's the mouth. Horse sore <laughs> to remove, it made the horse sore to remove the leverage from the toe? Well, when you, when you take it too far back, too quickly, if you take it all the way back to the inch and a half line when they're stretched way forward like that, it makes the horse very sore for a long time. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, yeah. I was just, I, I missed several horse chats. So I was wondering, you know, where that idea came from. Well, it's been brewing for a while, but I just didn't know what to do. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, and so now I just, because Marilyn kept telling me it makes horse sore. And whenever I did it, it would make the horse sore. Um, uh, so I mean, if they have an excessively long, if their toe is too long to begin with, it's been a long time since my horse's toes were too long. Now, there's been times when I know the whole foot shifted a fourth of an inch to where I would measure from the true apex, the white line, and it's one and a half inches for a good long time. And then all of a sudden, everything would just change. And when I would cut back the apex of the frog, it seemed to be further back and it would change like uh, a fourth of an inch. And so I would back up my toe past the white line a fourth of an inch, but the horse never got sore because it was like the foot was asking for it. You and know, he probably. Yeah. So he probably had a lot more soul. Yeah. So, yeah. so do you alter your your trim protocol now based on how much how much sole the horse has do you change your protocol depending on whether or not it's a thin sold horse or not yes so so what do you do for thin sold horses because it looks to me like this horse has sole but i'll mm -hmm. bet you it's not as thick as people think it is probably not no because it looks stretched out in the toe to that's me. what i'm my theory you know, is that there's only so many sole tubules so that the further out the toe gets, the thinner it gets. Of course, that's a theory. I don't know. No, you're um, right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. So what do you do for the thin sole horses that have that like, you know, soft dimple you talk about, you know, they, right in front of the frog, they got the little soft area and then it goes yeah. harder. Soft, and, soft in here under there. Yeah. Yep. I noticed exactly that. There. Yep. You can't you can't really do anything about that. What happens is that as the toe gets more correct and everything comes back and into place, then the sole there, the sole ridge, like the wall, okay, becomes the support is like a retaining wall support for the sole uh, rim here, the sole ridge. And then the sole ridge also backs up see all these horn tubules have to be in alignment too at a certain angle and so unless all this is backed up to where it's supposed to be just a minute let me get a draw uh hold on okay unless all this is backed up this sole ridge like the sole ridge is probably more right here okay and probably more shaped like that Okay, so if it's stretched up to here, then it's not retaining this sole that's under the coffin bone. And so the sole tubules, instead of being at this angle and then growing to their optimum thickness, they're at this angle. See? 
and you're, so your soul just can never get thick. And so you once you get the toe, dorsal wall and pillars back to bring this soul right in here back where it's supposed to be, then it's going to back up and it's going to support the soul behind it so that all of it can grow to its optimum thickness and do what it's supposed to do. Now, uh, let me clear uh, this. So her toe is too long right now. Um, she could come in and scribe a little bit here. Okay, let's like say to here. Let's take our toe back to here. Just right to there. Because this little nub in here, you could probably take off. Okay, so she would back up this toe straight across the board. Only it won't be real straight because you'll be like, if you are watching that video, I take that back, you know, to where uh, you can't hardly see it, but it's still supporting the sole. It's not a deep bevel. And then I blend in, as I'm going, I blend in the sides. You know, this all needs to be beveled. Just an easy bevel, right? Okay, we don't go past there. I would blend in these sides. And they still got the support of some of this wall, but the hardest outer tubules are blended off. Does that make sense? And if you wanted, you could just stop right there. And so I would do all that, and then I would come back and look at it and see what's going on within a few days. And I think that all of this is going to move somewhat. So that eventually you just, because here's the thing, that wall wants to come back anyway. It does not want to be stretched out like that. There's constant pressure pulling this whole thing back. The inner foot is pulling it back. So when you just create some boundaries, it can start to move all this. Even the soul will move. You know, it can, if the wall will pull back, it'll often move the soul. You'll, you'll actually see a piece of soul um, sticking above the wall here because the, the walls have just moved back and the soul will kind of edge out as the walls move back. And so I would just start there. Like, like, let's say right here was an inch and a half. You know, I used to do rocker toes like that because that is what I learned from Gene Ovenek's teachings. They did rocker toes all the time. Well, that's what his Linda, shoes look I'm like, sorry. right? Yeah. Yeah. Linda, yeah. Sorry, my computer is back. I was just, uh, it ran out of battery. Um, so I apologize if I disappeared. Uh, that's okay. Okay. Is this recorded or no? Yeah, it's been recorded okay. on YouTube. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see here. Let me do this. So, so can I ask about the, the pigeon towing, as in obviously the toe is turned in, like the foot is rotated in a little bit. Would you trim specific to that? Like would you lower lateral medial heel or side or anything? Or um, would you just leave the foot? Um. As you restore, see my, I'm, I trimmed my horse into being pigeon toed. Okay. Um, wait a minute before I go there. So Elena. Yes. So do you understand? Okay. You were gone. But what I said for her to do, mark right there, watch that video, bevel the toe back and then blend all this in back to at least that point. Yeah. Say. Linda, does it look like she's slippered or rockered the heels? No, no, they no, look no, no. good. No. Yeah. In fact, um, this is the the bars and the heels and everything are great. Um, and look at the uh, just a minute here. And this horse always suffered from what they call white line disease, but I told her it's because of the mechanical failure. Yeah. yeah so yep. there is no disease per se. Yeah. And this is a good foot to explain this on too, because look at the dirt. Look how there's no good connection in the sides of the foot, right? 
Yeah. Okay. Well, um, now let me do a new share here. Oh, great. Where is it? I'm just jumping in. I'm saying goodbye because I'm running out of battery on my mobile. Okay. Mobile bye. 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 Have a nice bye. great day. Just a minute. I lost you. Oh, this stupid thing. Okay, wait a minute. No, that's not what I wanted. Well, okay, I'm going to get to that pigeon toad thing. Just hold on a second. I want to show you. See, my, I trimmed my horse into having pigeon toes. And usually it's because one heel is lower than the other and pushing forward. And it's pushing all those horn tubules around in that direction. I trim both front feet into having pigeon toes. And so um, what we could do it now, do you have Linda, I want to say something about the pigeon toes also, because mm -hmm. I had, I, mean, I have this stallion that you looked quite a few months ago and uh -huh. he was pigeon toed and I was actually told, but I started to trim him and he's straightening up, you know, with that. Yeah. He's straightening up now. I yeah. will learn. Now we had the rain, so I'm going to look at his feet and take pictures, and then I will do comparison and I will post. Yeah, because it's like, you know how you, you twist off a jar lid? You know, let's just say, let's say I had um, a cupcake cup. So put a cupcake cup upside down on your hand, okay? Yeah. to where the bottom doesn't move but you can kind of touch the top like it's a jar lid and you just slightly move it in mm -hmm. one direction it's it, you see, you're going to see all the horn tubules are pointed yeah. in that direction and so if you look at your colt's feet from the front and you look at the horn tubules are they straight or do they tweak over a bit See, I'm going to look at this foot here. Just a second. New share. I've just sent you um, two photos in the messenger, in the Linda, in the scout. Yeah, that's, that's one of them. That's one of the front right foot. So the highlighted bit is the white stuff that came out after I trimmed that foot that we've already discussed. See, um, I don't know about that. Is squished out between there on three feet. I did that. That is just I the weird. Fog. That is really weird looking. But it could be, you know, uh, if uh, the food is the uh, the high, the back of the foot is pulled inwards, it could be periopal, just the chunk. Yeah. Of the periopal the being really spooned and kind of curled in. Yeah, so what does it in a, feel like? It's super soft. So she does is in it, a paddock that has a creek in it, so her feet are wet does all the it, time. So once I cut the does it almost the top of the does it off, wipe off or is it kind of firm or uh no, you do have to scrape it to get it off. It doesn't just wipe off and it does smell as well. So I thought it was thrush. Huh. But, yeah, so I, I did trim it out once I presented, but I got really nervous about doing that. Yeah. So this is where we started. So this was um, this was her foot. So she's two and a half now. So she was trimmed from about eight weeks onwards by my barefoot trimmer. And this is a trim I had when my trimmer finished. And you can see the heels yeah, being that completely different. Um, yeah. So this is where we started, and I'm wondering if that's caused her to turn the toes in. Yes. Because she was born with straight legs. I know that for a fact. Oh, um, yeah. Because I hand raised her. Um, she was orphaned. Um, so I know that her feet were pretty close to perfect. She, they were difficult yeah. because she was orphaned, and while we tried to give her all the nutrition we can, she just still suffered a bit. So you could see it in the feet. Um, but in all this time, because I had an equine podiatrist, they never trimmed her frogs ever. Christ. And this is the trim she put on her. 
basically. See, this and is it's horrible. actually it is actually medial high as well. So while mm-hmm. this looks worse in the in the heels, the medial side is at the pillar and the quarters mm-hmm. is actually high. Yeah, diagonally across is mm-hmm. basically higher. So now I've started correcting the heels a little bit with my limited knowledge and trying to take the medial side down but it's just becoming more and more apparent just how twisted the foot is and that the bones aren't even aligned mm-hmm. above the capsule which is really stressing me out because I'm not sure I if I'm doing things you. wrong or, yeah um and she's only a baby and I really want her to be well so I think she I'm will be to figure out how to yeah they're they're super resilient Okay. Okay. And meant to survive. And so I think she will be. And just the fact they never trimmed the frog, see, that, you know, first of all, that very well could be periopal. Um, can you take some more pictures of it? See, you've got, got layers. You've actually got layers of periopal here. Um, yeah. um, it's probably been a long time since any real frog grew. But that, see... That kind of has me stumped. And what I'm hoping is, uh, I'm hoping it's, well, it's not even attached. It's kind of attached, but not, huh? It's almost folded too. Like it's, it kind of comes up on the left and on the right. Like I said, it kind of popped up in three of her feet, both front feet and one back foot. Could you um, take a video and yeah, some more pictures that. of that? um there's this one i've got hang on i'll send you this one of the other front foot oh, what is it? So, just to give you an idea so it actually it almost folds out yeah and look at uh, see it's really weird uh there yeah, the last one i sent you, you can see it in the central sulcus as well okay let me just uh go over here and enlarge this one first because I want to take a look at it. Well, yeah, I can see you being very concerned uh, with whatever that is. Now, if you see, she is spooled around in here. Okay? Yeah. Um. So that very well could just be a big chunk of periopal filling up okay. the central sulcus. Okay? I mean, she because- has sound. And if you can trim it and she doesn't jerk her foot away or there's no blood, that's very possible that that is just periopal. Okay. Okay. Um, Now, what I see here is that uh, maybe this heel just needs to be, these heels need to be addressed and so do the bars, you know, and the frog more. Um, The frog needs to be any dead stuff trimmed off if you could boot her up somehow with some homemade booties or something and some could condi- is it wet where you're at uh it's Did just started you? drying out so but but she stands in the creek all the time so oh, at well the moment then, she still has she's wet fine. feet yeah she's getting enough moisture probably then mm. she say she stands in the creek all the time well she regularly she crosses the creek regularly yeah so um and we it's still due in the morning okay um i can send you what i've done with her on the very last trim okay i'm gonna look at your um, pictures here hang on i'll send you this one so if you go into your messenger the very last photo i just send you is the last thing i did Okay. And I actually lower the outside, the lateral heel a little bit more. Okay. But like I said, it's not having the effect that it's doing. And then I got freaked out and went, okay, I don't think I understand how the foot grows enough. You're doing okay. Don't worry. You'll get it. Okay. I mean, we're all still trying to get it. I'm still trying to get it. Okay. Um. Believe you me, I've been through all of it, you know. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, she just has very uh, so on this unhealthy... photo, you can see. So, in this photo, you can see in the central sulcus, 
the white stuff actually came in came in and that's actually folded left and right hmm. and you see how it's like in the middle and then it folds to the right and to the left and layers kind of thing yeah almost I out in that could yeah. that be frog corium uh it could be frog cram, but what has me worried is that it could be digital cushion Ooh. oh my god um because your digital cushion is, is right under there see because uh so but you would think it would it would bleed if that's what it was you know and so what what you have to start doing is start getting these layers off this is definitely periopal covering okay. the whole sides of the frog here um and without them trimming the frog uh, the frogs just don't develop you know the skin doesn't develop things like that and so um um getting first of all getting this cleaned up more mm -hmm. Um, we, you want to do that, uh, and leave the central sulc sulcus for now? I, I would leave it kind of for now, kind of, okay. because I'm really unsure what that is. And, and <clears throat> that's what concerns me because see that is digital cushion right on the other side of the frog gram. That's why you I know? got really nervous when it squished out. It, it was smelly though. Well, yeah, like see, that shouldn't even and... be there like that. <laughs> You know, it shouldn't, if you take a piece and it's like fat, because digital cushion is like fat, okay, mm -hmm. then, uh, then it's digital cushion. If it's just more like skin, it's, it's periopal and it's just moist and it's, it's a layer that's covering your frog corium. Okay, let me show you um a picture of uh and of course uh let's see here okay so so that's the last trim i did on her this one this wait a minute oh uh, no. oh wait a minute uh new share okay I yeah just went to the right place this is the last trim you did yeah so i tried oh, to okay. lower the outside the lateral heel a bit more okay um, and, let's see here. Okay. Okay. So we're on this one now. Okay. So and that's, and that's is this the, the right same front. foot? That's the no, other that's the right front. That's okay, the left front. Left front. If you go two back, you'll have the left one. One more back. Oh, oh sorry. That's um, keep going. Okay, so sorry. eventually it'll get so that you don't have to bevel this high on the wall. That's not really good to do either. Okay. Okay. Um, you bevel from the bottom and then you just lightly finish off from the top. And I would watch that video I did last week several times. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then you don't want to trim too often, but you do want to uh, kind of try and get those frogs uh going see see now if you look like this at the picture i have of with the two spools it mm -hmm. looks a lot like this you can see this just pulled under that's periopal definitely definitely and so <clears throat> man i just think that that's probably periopal but that it it's you know, uh, like I said, digital cushion is fat. Fatty. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to show you uh, what we found on on uh, Mamie Mann's. If that were digital cushion, would you expect that to be lame? Well, it's white. It's off-white, but it's it's definitely fat. Like fat, like the kind of fat that's on a roast that if you took a bite of, you would chew it forever. Mm -hmm. you know it's fat all right fat fat um but if that were coming out do you think she'd be lame well i would think it wouldn't i would think there'd be some blood or something because you have to go through the frog corium to get to the digital cushion yeah See? um so 
So I don't know. Um, although I know on my horse, he went through some frog issues that had some weird things kind of like that. Um, so I don't know. Okay. I don't know what that is exactly, but I think we all will find out. Um, just a minute here. I wanted to show you something. Um, so maybe man and I have been uh, uh, working on this periopal thing uh, for quite some time and oh in the meanwhile I'll show you a picture of uh, a good wild horse foot a domestic this is chester by the way uh the our what's her he's our mascot horse right um sharon just trimmed him and look at that you know uh he's just got excellent feet look at how you can see the white line all the way around you know and that that's just the surface trim on that guy but he's just got such tremendous feet, just massive. Um, okay, so uh, let me see. Okay, so that's, where am I at here? Okay, so she was in this situation where she had trimmed the periopal, but look what she got. She never got a frog stay. See, it was always like this. And then, well, she had a video here. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Da, 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 da. And we, we knew that wasn't right, but just totally quite kind of what to do. Uh, didn't really know. Let's see here. Okay. Here's the video. Just a second. Okay. What? Look what she found. See that white layer? I found stuff like that on Dolly too. See it? And it's, it's right in the same spot that white stuff you have is. See it? And then she, it, it, I wish you could hear it because she's laughing when she found it. Do you know what it is or how the it's horse a layer, reacted yeah, after that? Yeah, it's a layer of periopal skin. Uh -huh. And it's covering the frog corium and it's keeping her frog from growing. It's keeping her from having a, a, uh, frog stay wow. see um that's what it is see on my horse um i had the same thing i had a layer of periopal that covered the frog corium that kept the frog from growing because this corium is like grass if you cover it over that part won't grow anymore see Yeah, she was pretty thrilled to find that. Because look, she's had this big what? crack that with nothing growing there, right? Well, now we was know that, why. Was that horse, no. uh, does that horse have got dry feet or wet feet? Um, I think it's old? dry there right now. So or no, there we... might have been moisture there. Forgot where okay. she's at. Over in Europe somewhere or somewhere. Sorry, sorry, maybe but that's pretty cool so see that's why i say that's what that could be because it could it can get very thick and just laying in there you know and mm. so um let's see he's like he's from south africa oh excuse me okay south africa i i believe so yes okay. 
God, I'm terrible. Um, I thought it was Sweden, so. <laughs> just I, th I think it's South Africa. <laughs> okay. See, that's pretty cool to find that. Now, I'll show you that. I've shown you that on my horse. Um, let's see here. Uh, where would it be? Oh, let's see. Let's LMNOP QRSTV. Let's see if I can find it on my horse. Um, well, I'll show you this deal here. Um, here's where I trimmed him into being pigeon toed. See there how it tweaked around. And it's because I trimmed this heel out more and it was pushed forward. And so uh, we might have had you tr lower. I don't know. See, really, um, you got a map. And uh, even on those small feet like that, you still have to make sure you're going to measure the heels. Um, you can't just always look look at them. Uh, I do. See. I do measure everything. Um, okay. I'm just wondering from the mechanic point of view, with a pigeon toe, um, is it that the because you trimmed the lateral heel more, did it tip it back and then push it in? Yeah. So would you want to almost encourage a lateral heel to get a little longer or at least level yeah. out? To yeah, pull or the even foot back shorten around? your medial or shorten your medial heel a little. Something. Okay, that's where I got lost regarding which one to shorten and lengthen to help return because, the foot back oh, out. Sorry, I just wanted to ask, and the medial heel is more upright, right? Yeah. And uh, the lateral heel is run forward. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, because uh, I there are so many feet like this, and it's so... Un I also have this dilemma to lower the more upright heel um, just a tiny bit. And uh, in a sense, I don't have, uh, I was experimenting with it, but I couldn't get the right answer for it. But it would logic, maybe more logical for me, it seemed to lower the more upright heel. Yeah, that's what I started doing and it helped me. I'm looking for this. Okay, here we go. Look here. Just a second. I found it. Do share. Okay, this is when I found that for the first time. See? Uh, now, just a second here. If I could find when I thought I had a good foot, but I didn't. See, that was still there, even though uh, it was looking like this. Okay, so see, this is all periopal growing over that frog. And see that right there? This appeared before it looked like full. It looked like one piece. But then when I removed that, see how that's being fed by the periopal up here? Being fed into there. But look at the gaps. And so then when I cut that feed, I had this little number here. Look how it's white. Oh, look at the white stuff. See? The white streaks in it. So you yeah. could see how that could pooch up. Okay? So if you do wind up cutting those out, save them in a baggie. <laughs> okay? Okay. <laughs> um, I haven't I trimmed the bulbs at all. Yeah. Like you did there. I've only trimmed her frogs. I haven't gone near the bulbs because I know we have to gently release the back of the foot. Okay, so so this part isn't really bulb though. No, I mean just further down. Yeah, like I have trimmed the frog, just not the bulb. So okay, see, I, I didn't them. trim that. That this was uh this grew. This is heel oh, okay. that grew and became detached from here. See, this grew out. This this was attached nice. to the perioval over here, but it grew and pushed this away from it. Um, so 
So then I cut that and I waited till the next day because I was unsure what all I should do. I did trim some of this out, you know, so then I have this flap, right? Well, you lift up the flap and look at that. There's a whole layer of skin under there. That's periopal corium that has been what I call cornified, meaning it's, it's just kind of kind of sealed itself off while this is laying over the top of it. You see how that attached right here and over all that? When I trimmed out the heels, it stripped out the frog. All this periopal grew to uh, save, save the horse's foot. So, so that, look at it, it's white. I think that's what that is that you have between those bulbs. It's periopal covering your frog corn. Doesn't yeah. that make sense? See how it's white? Yeah. You know, um, we act I actually, when I first trimmed a frog, I think I've trimmed a frog twice now. And I did get some of the pockets that is. And then when I trimmed it before this white stuff showed, I'd actually trimmed the frog up and there was no white stuff at all. And then I turned her out and she was, like I said, she's in a paddock with creeks and stuff. So, and we have a lot of dew still, even though it's our dry season. So her feet are wet most of the time. Uh -huh. And it almost looked like it's squished out all of a sudden because mm. it wasn't there after the trim. Uh -huh. But when I brought her in a week later or two even to recheck her feet, it was there. Okay, the car we'll had see. squished out. And there is digital cushion right on the other side of here. Right. See, but I would think it would bleed or something okay. if the frog corium was cut. You know, I don't know. Uh, I'm just guessing. So then I, I trimmed out. Now look here. You see the color of that? That's your frog corium under there. Uh, it's the color of skin. Like that's the true color of the frog corium and the foot is skin colored. Um, but of course it's skin that's made to grow this. If you get too close, it'll bleed. But in reality, the very color of it is the color of skin. And I've seen this on more than one horse. Uh, when I was looking at this, I didn't realize it at the time though. I was wondering, what is that? You know, so anyway, got that layer off. And um, I'll show you the frog that grew. This is the frog that grew in two weeks right here. And it had a different texture mm. than this frog, fake periopal frog, ever had. See? Yeah, wow. So, but, but you do see that this periopal goes to cover everything over and help the horse survive but then it kind of, you're trying to restore the foot it can become a hindrance you know yeah i mean she she grew tremendous tremendous frog after that was the new frog sort of what you would describe as granular or rough a little more granular but just just uh more rubbery more rubbery and hmm. firm mm -hmm. it was just different like this kind of the back part a little kind of funky and deformed um but then i think i trimmed it one i should have let it establish more and uh but i kept taking this out and then i i started having problems so i i did a little too much and now it's just getting straightened out again um this is just an example from 2012 with my bulbs on the ground and the heels trimmed out. And this is um, 2022. On the, sorry, oh, on the okay. very right. See how what? that's white in between on the right picture? That's white between his, what's that? That white that's bit there. Because that's what it looks like that squishes yeah. out when it's wet and clean. Well, then it, it could be periopal. Because, okay. I mean, it will cover that whole thing in there. And, and uh, you know, we're just learning more about how that grows. 
you know, um, if her frogs never got trimmed, then her foot no, was haven't. growing. See, it's kind of the opposite. Like if their foot, if the heels, their, their foot grew pretty decent, but then their heels get trimmed out and all that gets pulled down into a smaller hoof capsule. Well, then if a horse is growing and their frogs never get trimmed, then the foot is growing, but it's all it's being pulled still being pulled underneath because the frog not being trim is not allowing the foot to expand the way it should yeah she was almost club footed as well yeah exactly because it's all bound yeah and because but, we're always on soft ground they never wear their feet off yeah see so they haven't yeah. worn their frogs ever yeah yeah, so, you know, so That's it amazing. will make a difference. And you're going to start, well, I show you here, I found strange things. You know, all kinds of strange stuff going on with the frogs. Like, I'm just looking, what the heck is going on? See there? There's something under there. See that piece of periopal there? When I had the heels trimmed out and it was pulling everything down, crying out loud. See, I was beveling the heels. Look at that. That's disgusting. I'd be really mortified of myself today. And I am, you know, why? Because that image, that poster hoof had been put in my head. See? So... That's just a simulation. This is just some of the stages I went through. So anyway, okay. So who else's horse? What other horse are we going to look at? Does does that help you, Linda, for today? Yes, thank you. I, I just I, I think I'll stick to trying to lower the medial heel a little bit as well to try and undo the twist in the foot. Okay. But it'll just take time to undo the twist, yeah. you yeah. know, and one of the big time. things that'll undo the twist is getting that frog going. The frog okay. is vital okay. um, because it acts like, like a jack or a pump on the back of that foot to start straightening everything out. Okay. Because, yeah, somehow her whole foot doesn't look aligned over the capsule anymore. You can actually see it in one of the pictures. Her whole bones seem to be sitting to the inside of the yeah. capsule. But she's young. She'll Pretty straighten strange. out. Okay. okay. Yeah, don't yeah, get I just want to try and make sure I do the right thing. Soon. See? Yeah. Because it's this is all a growth process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll, like I said, I've only trimmed her last week, so I'll give us some time and see what happens next. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go from there. Okay, does anybody else have another horse we, we want to look you. at? Because I don't think the swift chat's long enough. <laughs> if you wanted to potentially look at a periopal over the frog, I can send you those photos. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do I, like how do I send them to you? Uh, through Messenger. On your personal, Linda? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're not technically, well, I guess we're not friends, but we're friends. Um, well, we're so friends. I, will, <laughs> I will friend you and then I'll send them right now we're friends but you i only have two followers that's how how that's mm. the kind of crap i post well, <laughs> we don't want to follow you linda <laughs> uh i also have um the interesting pictures of this younger one-year-old i oh, yes. sent to you okay let me, let me go me. find that um he's pretty interesting but he's in quite a bad shape Oh, um, I think he was mistreated, and when I arrived there, so basically uh, he was restrained by three people for trim. And yeah. uh, before that, so when I arrived, they didn't tell me, and he was uh, quite uh, scared and protecting himself. But we were able to do it. it took us five hours. <laughs> okay, is that yeah. this guy here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to feed. And uh, will be very interesting to to view him. I can send you some pictures. He looks different than to the picture I sent you, actually. Okay. 
Well, see, yeah. I thought these two feet were exceptionally uh, interesting and really showed kind of like this foot over here has been able to expand. So he's a Hungarian sport horse and I didn't have time yet to sort out the pictures, but I'll just send to you what okay. I have. Okay. Because they are quite something, in my opinion. <laughs> okay. Well, he's he's really uh, neatly, he's huge. That's a, Yeah, that's and when he's jumping and kicking, it wasn't very no. pleasant. Well, he looks like he's on stilts. Yeah, and he is not in good shape really. But I yeah, think no. it's I think it's stress, and he has ulcers. Poor guy. Yeah. Aw. But um, well, he's is going he to be. Is he kept in a stall most of the time? No, he actually now he's kept with a similar uh, uh, young stallions. Mm -hmm. So he gets lots of bites. But I think before he was kept in the stall. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so he really just needs someone to be his friend and and brush him a lot and pick up his feet and take him for walks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but who, who does he belong to? Well, not to me, and I can't take him here. So whatever, they have to do something with him. I just do his. Um, I do the job that I yeah. was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who who owns him? Is well, this a... girl on the picture. Okay. But she wants to sell him, but in this uh, condition, it's not her fault, really. No. Um, I think, and she really wants to get him straight and good. Okay. So... Gosh, look at his ankles. Look at his, look at his fetlock. I guess that's just the way he's standing, but it looks huge. No, oh. his, uh, his hind fetlocks, they're puffy. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. his feet aren't released. Uh, they're very, they're contracted. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, you know, I think he will be fine. Yeah. It's just because his heels are very, the bulbs are kind of sheared. Yeah. Uh, so it will take some time, but he's an interesting case, definitely. Yes, <laughs> yeah. he sure is. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had him here. Well, I, I would take him, but I have a stallion, so I can't oh, yeah. take because I can really look after him and everything. But uh, yeah. maybe from next year, I can do such things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. yeah, he is an interesting case. Yeah, I sent you some uh, shots of his feet, but maybe we should keep it till uh, next time since okay. I, I need to sort them and I don't want to bombard you with uh, you know lots of pictures I, I just need to sort them out but yeah he just got super dead frogs and and his foot has not been allowed to expand at all yeah you know so I mean, he, yeah he's club footed because his frogs haven't been trimmed yeah but when i trimmed him his mm -hmm. foot the club foot started to look much better actually oh yeah already yeah so i think what i will do I will uh, just uh, maybe I will sort the pictures and then I will post them. Okay, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah. Linda. Yeah. Would you um trim the heels on this foot or no? Just... Okay. Not really? No. I he didn't... wants to be at that elevation. He, it's the back of the foot that needs to expand. Right. Okay. I took a little bit of the heel, yeah. but really just to, his heels are uh, four and a half centimeters, which is uh, two, two inches. Yeah. So, which and uh, at this so, stage, after the trim. Where am I at here? Eh. Oh, there I am. I guess I'm sharing this, aren't I? Um. See, see, these frogs are just dead, and so his his foot is not expanding back here where it needs to expand. And then, of course, these big bars grew up and just held everything right there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so 
I can just, I'm just trying to send you pictures of the solar view after the trim, but. Oh. Yeah, the, no, I this, have to... this would be graded as a club foot right here. Okay, but it's all, see, now I would take this off, this side off here, you know, um, in into the heel, uh, but mostly I'd be working on this horse's frog and bars. Uh, I just sent you the shot of the club foot after the trim or okay. of the lateral shot because okay. I found it. Oh, well, that looks great. That looks great. What, if anything, did you do to the frogs? Oh, I did. I just, it's just so, I just have so wait. I sent you, they're kind of mixed, everything the hind and the fronts, but. Uh, um, just to might want to tell her uh, this horse has to have moisture to his feet. Yeah, it's almost impossible. Now we had big rain. I'm really happy and I'm going to go actually and see him. Okay. Because we had two days of good rain and I'm going to meet all my clients. <laughs> meet all yeah, my I clients. sent you some solar pictures. Okay. Oh, this is great. Yeah. This is this is the hind. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, much better. So and, and you know and yeah, don't be afraid to take all that off too. But this is really low. It's like deep, deep, deep. Yeah. So and I couldn't because it's very hard. Okay. So it Maybe. doesn't make didn't make sense. I thought I will wait for the rain. Yeah. And okay. because they're not used to soaking feet here. For them, it's like some kind of luxury spa. It's it's much more down to earth here yeah. in terms of taking care of horses. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, and then just you need to just get your bar down a little. Yeah, I will do it that looking time. Looking good, looks great. Looks much better, and yeah. I just really hope he was such a sweetheart. Yeah. So, this one is a little bit deformed, mm -hmm. but uh, I think that's his worst foot. Yeah. But I think with time, I will be able to, I think it's because of the frogs were not trimmed and the frog was really pushing the bar out. Yeah, yeah. Well, great. Well, you got a good start. The only thing, Linda, like with this feet, when you have one side more, you know, pulled out and the other one is straight and kind of even going under. Yeah. What would be, what I should be aware of how to kind of try to bring them to more even. Yeah, just. um, It's quite a balance, right? Yeah, and and all that worked for me was making the other heel just a little lower than this one that's pulled out. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the beveling of uh, the in this case the medial side, the more upright, mm -hmm. just keep on beveling because also the the it pushes up the the coronary band, the hairline. Yeah. So we were talking always a little bit put. Yeah, and you can even you can even take that side down a little more because another thing that happens is um, not only does this side get pulled out, but this guy's side gets pulled in and gets so, jammed. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and so it makes the sole much more dense. Exactly. And so then that sole is going to glue that foot right there. Mm -hmm. So you can take uh, more of this sole out over here to yeah. loosen this up. You even said in one of the chats that where the white line, you would scratch it or make like a little, like a canal. Yeah. Okay. That helps. Okay, good. Well, that's the project. So we I will see. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You for... might run into some of that white stuff too. Yeah, I will be just documenting looking at everything. This, yeah. Just looking at that, it looks like that could happen. Yeah. So he will be unwrapping himself, hopefully. <laughs> well, um, some to do to do. OK, 
Okay, Brandy, are you in the hoof chat? You got it, girl. Okay, you sent me some pictures. Yeah. And uh, is okay, explain to me what I'm seeing now. Okay, so horse has, I've known him since he was two. I ended up purchasing him from my client. Um, he has had footy issues for basically his whole life. I have spent thousands of dollars on farriers and Aww. shoes and packages and all the things. And then finally I got fed up because I am not a farrier. I am just a horse trainer and I got fed up paying people. So I decided to do it myself. Yep, good for you. And this is sort of where we're at and I think my problem, because I cannot grow heel. I do not touch the heels. He is a chronic walker and uh -huh. he will walk to the left all day, 10 meter circles to the left in a big 40 acre field or in his paddock. He will walk 10 meter circles to the left. Huh. Yeah. So I have a giant heel problem, but I think that's why I think the scoop trap was brilliant is that a periopal has grown over my frog. Because my angles are terrible on his hinds. And that right hind is my bane of my existence right now. I have gotten yeah. him sound up front. And he is, yeah. I would say, about 95 to 98% sound all around. But I, that right hind is still my problem footy. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. sure, his pastern sure looks upright there. Um, let's see. Is that the right hind too? Nope. That's the left hind. The right yeah. hind is the one with the blood. <laughs> That's on the ground. Oh, where you cut him? I okay. totally cut him. I'm so, so so bad. I know. Oh, well, at least you didn't cut yourself and sever a tendon or something. Oh, that's good. You know, wow. I mean, his bulbs are really pulled down under his feet. Oh, yeah. Uh, He's walking on his bulbs. They are polished oh, yeah. like concrete. Yeah. Wow. And that is his down foot in the front so that's his left front okay yeah so yeah <laughs> yeah they just look like they hurt yep, well they do. when you start uh learning about what they're really supposed to be like and then you just look at them you just know you know uh yeah Let's see here. I got to enlarge that again. Well, you've come to the right place, <laughs> at least. Well, with all of your guys' help and knowledge, he is now way more sound than when I started. That's so, great. Thank you. That's great. Well, we're glad to have you. Okay, so you need to work on, on trimming these bars down a little more because these are not the real bars. Um, uh, these are, would be very, uh, distorted bars. So, but what they'll do is they'll hold your heels right there. So and I not, take them down basically every week. Okay, good. And then they yeah, just keep coming back. Yep. They will. They will, but just keep taking them down because sooner or later, all that'll straighten out, you know, and some of that is coming down from up above and being pushed out. It's not just growth. Um, okay. because uh they do grow up when 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 the back is pulled down like this then the bars push up into the foot they bent they literally get bent up into the foot um so that's one area that you can really work on is just getting these bars thinned and down and then keep on trimming your frog and trimming between here to kind of get that opened up before you go change oh go back to that picture if you don't mind okay so if you look on the medial sort of heel area there that it looks like it's looks turning. like a hook yeah and then the actual sort of bulb of the heel it it almost looks like there's an indent yeah that i was like uh what the hell is going on <laughs> well that's where where um, because he doesn't have uh, correct heels, it has really just pulled it in. It's mm -hmm. taken the sidewall and just totally curled it in. Um, like what I was showing earlier. Were you here earlier? Yep, I've been here the okay, whole time. Okay, that's what that is. Um, 
because uh, he doesn't have enough heel and the foot wants to be elevated, all this really wants to be up off the ground. Yeah. Okay. And so as it pulls up, it pulls that heel in like that. Yeah, it's just wild that it wrinkled. Yeah, it is. You like, know? Huh. Yeah, like the buttress just totally curled in, but it's probably not even the buttress. Uh, I have often wondered if this, if, you know, that heel buttress gets curved into the foot, and I've often wondered if sometimes it's not growing like bar. Oh, know? that's interesting, yeah. And, and that's why some of these bars get so thick and heavy, you know, because they're really actually heel buttress. But I, I don't know for sure, but it just, you know, makes you wonder what all's going on in there. Because oh, everything's makes... growing, but it's not in its right spot. Yeah, because it doesn't go away. Yeah, completely. and so you'll see somewhere. this big area here and they'll say, oh, look at that big heel buttress. Well, that's like cut, cutting a carrot on a slant and saying, oh, look at that big carrot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh whatever you'd call that kind of cut, instead of cutting them straight so they're little round circles, you cut them on a slant, they're really big and oblong. Yep. You know, that's why the buttresses look big, but in reality, uh, they're trimmed out. You know? So his frogs look exceptionally wide. Yeah. So I'm, obviously I'm afraid of blood. Um, <laughs> but like, so where should I not go because it's you know talking about releasing and that I don't want to yeah. take off too much periopal because obviously it's there for a reason yeah but where like just well, right up. the frog is all covered with periopal <laughs> and uh you need to grow this part of the foot but you need to take the bars down um it's funny how this one is really curved in mm -hmm. but uh, uh you need to take this bar down more and this bar down more and trim off this more of this frog and find where your true apex is down here for real. Um, you could take off still quite a bit of frog, I'm pretty sure on that. Or if it's periopal, it could just be periopal. See, the periopal we don't really want to mess with too bad is here. Yep. Okay, right in here. But the periopal here on the frog, it would be nice if it would release this out. See? So so I would not be afraid to take down the frog at all. Okay. Linda, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, is a frog that is not trimmed up um, enough, will that prevent the heels from growing? It, it, yes. Here's why. Because you're, in order to get your true heel, the whole back of this foot has to release and these bulbs have to come out and they have to unwrap the heel buttress. Okay. So the frog binds everything under to where Brent, stuff can't grow. Right. Okay. Um. So thank you for connecting that dot for me because Brandy was saying that she cannot get the heels to grow on this horse. Mm -hmm. And I have one that won't grow heel either and so i'm gonna go look at those frogs i'm gonna see if i kept this one picture uh -huh. lucky me i'll show you how my horse grew some heel um okay let's see uh new share okay so so originally the cartilage and the bulb and this, where the periopal skin was attached right to here. Okay. And so then by trimming the frog and the frog releasing, because the frog holds all that under there too, see? By trimming the frog and the frog releasing. Now remember, it curves under, right? It curves. Mm -hmm. It's in a curved shape. So when, it, when it's released, it's going to uncurve like this. Well, so... Since it was able to release, then the wall, which was attached here, instead of grow, just growing here and, and pushing whatever down and out, instead, it was able to start growing up here. It 
the growth pushed the foot up and added this wall into the capsule. And yeah. the re reason it's rounded is simply because that was it coming unbound and shaped like that. So now this wall grows down like this. Right. See that? Okay. Yeah. So, it's almost like the heel buttress corium got exposed. And so exactly. Now, now it can actually grow instead of being pinched inside. Yeah, exactly. Because it's all like grass. You know how grass stops growing if you cover it up? Yeah. And then you uncover it, it starts growing again. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what, what happened here. I think we're going for a marathon today. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to need a cookie after this. <laughs> yeah, cookies and milk. Yes. <laughs> or or supper. Yeah, supper. Oh, my God. Uh, you didn't even tell me about supper. Well, that's just breakfast. <laughs> oh, you're going to be having breakfast, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What time is it where you're at? Oh, uh, it's now 7, 7.30. Ah. <laughs> well, you got up early. Yeah, I did. Like, oh, I woke up, like, oh, yeah, hoof chat is on. <laughs> then I didn't go back to bed. Oh, that's <laughs> many awesome. questions. Can I get you to have one last look at one sure. of my feet? I just send you another one in, in the chat. Sure. Last one. This is a question. Um, you can see how laterally, medially unbalanced the foot is in that photo. And um, I've had that in, so that's again my filly, but all of my horses presented with that type of foot in the back feet. They were all medially high. So I have considered that it may be a weakness of my trimmer before, before I stopped, before I started trimming them myself. I'm getting your, your page here yeah. in just a second. It's Linda. Oh, here we go. Okay. Let's see. Um, let me uh, find this where is to very share, last one. To share. Okay. How's that? Is that it? So that's that's a left hind. Okay. Now this and heel looks ramped. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. See how this yeah, heel was, looks yeah. very square? But this yeah. heel looks like she angled the the rasp got angled and they took the heel off. Right. So I've got this. I, I I started with this in all of my horses. I've got four horses. I've got two youngsters. So this one is my two and a half year old. <coughs> and um, each of their back feet ended up looking like this. So I have put it down to it's potentially just a weakness in the trimmer it that is. she yeah. ended up trimming all of my back feet like this. So all of yeah. them are starting to turn their toes out in the back feet. Yep. Um, so so to correct that, I have started um, grasping the medial side a bit more at the pillars as well because obviously the whole, like, yeah, that whole left side, the pillars is higher. Um, but the sole is now higher as well. So I've got to actually do I rasp into the sole to, to bring it back little bit by little bit or do i just leave well, the just, just a little bit side? but what what you really need to do here is grow this heel back yeah i haven't touched that at all See? because there's no heel yeah um and so what it's also done is pulled this out and uh so you need to like right. trim down a little bit in here because you've got this frog pulled over here now okay yeah if you see red stop <laughs> <laughs> yeah well this one that's one of the feet i trimmed it's down and it also color. popped the white stuff out but anyway there we use a different color so just like <laughs> this heel this up here and the front and the bar should go like that yeah lower okay so you just got to grow this heel up so that means from here back okay you you mm -hmm. don't pebble the wall don't yeah, bounce yeah, yeah. on the heels at all yeah yeah and because you want full wall there mm -hmm. bearing ground weight 
And so you're just going to grow this heel here. You're going to trim down this bar. Yeah. I lost it. Trim the bar down to the center. Can I eat it? And then just no. keep keeping your frog cleaned up. Clean out your central sulcus. Okay. And um, takes time and stuff. But the thing that you got going for you is is we have all made all those mistakes and and we're kind of figuring some of this stuff out. And so you got people to help you. Yeah. So my question is around the soul um, by the pillars. So would you take that down a little bit more? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, that'll help balance it out. Because if we were to turn this foot over, um, this side would be higher. Okay, right? yeah. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. And so just to kind of level her out to help her mm -hmm. um, until you can get this side of the foot growing. Because this would make, um, is she towing in mm -hmm. or towing out? Out. Okay, yeah. Because it's a back eye foot. on the inside, they toe out. Eye yeah. on the outside, okay. they toe in. Right. Technically, except for in the front feet, seems to be a reverse process. But definitely in the backs. Yeah. Sorry, what did I you would... say? On the front feet, it's different. Well, they just act different. I don't know why. Okay. They don't. They, you so, don't see them toe out all that often. You do see them. I have, well, look, they're I built different. Got... I've got one horse that has two toes turned out in the front feet. Oh, you do? And then I have her whose toes are turned in, and I'm like, this is doing my head in, trying to figure out what how do these do. feet grow and well, what to do on which horse and which foot. Yeah. <laughs> this and is why I got a bit lost. <laughs> you think about it, though. Front knees bend back, and, and then their hocks bend forward. And so it could, yeah, could have right. an effect on all of that. You know, okay. Uh, or something. Okay. Okay. Well, cool. Um, so, yeah, I'll do that. And okay. she has all the holes in her sole there. You can see just by the toe the little black mark. Yeah. Are they just stone just bruises? Probably exfoliatable sole. Okay. Because it's rock it's hard. Just like dead, I tried yeah, to... it's just dead sole. Well, I tried to trim some of that soul out and it won't budge, so I kind of didn't trim it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it's maybe supposed to be attached, so I just left it. Well, if you were to to just rasp into it a bit and then she were to walk around, she'd probably knock some out maybe a little bit, but she ain't got much extra <laughs> foot, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. You'll see what <laughs> happens when you trim this side down. Don't just mm -hmm. bevel Rasp it down. Yeah, yeah, I've been yeah. doing that just every time a little bit more to try and get get it a bit more level. Is there yeah, any? Where do you, like, you're in South Africa. Uh, Australia. Australia, that's right. Yeah. So, um, is there so apart from measuring the dorsal wall and um, the heels, is there any other way you can show you can see the lateral medial balance? when just, you have a foot uh, like this just uh you know you want to look at your down. bulbs are they pretty mm -hmm. much the same or is one really pulled over bad um uh sighting down the foot you learn to sight down the foot like mm -hmm. um you know if you draw these things mm -hmm. you know your deal across the toe and then across the apex like so yeah. and then come back to where the bars are supposed to end right here about the center of the frog okay this is going to show you you know i mean look at already you we would see that this is high over yeah here. yeah you know so that that will help doing yeah, these lines do that. Yeah. helps you yeah, i do you know. them every time okay cool. all right thank you so much you're I'm welcome you you're go. welcome <laughs> And everyone else. Okay. Well, heck, we're here. Anybody else? <laughs> Speak up now or forever hold your peace. Well, till next week. Thank you so much for all your time and, and patience of answering the same questions <laughs> over and over. <laughs>
no problem. No problem. I mean, I really learn, I'm getting, my understanding increases every time I do one of these things, you know, I understand it a little more. Yeah. You know, solidifies it, helps me to uh, 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 explain it maybe a little better and stuff. So, okay, well, it looks like, uh, let's see. So how long was this one? Five, six hours. <laughs> almost, Holy almost who, six hours. Who would think that you could sit and talk about, we have, we put Joe Rogan to shame. <laughs> you know, his can go pretty long and stuff. Who would think you could talk about aliens for six hours? Well, I guess a lot of people. Um, but yeah, six hours. It doesn't seem like that to me. Does it seem like that to you? Everybody goes, oh my God, yes. Can we go now? Okay. All right. Well, just think about it as, uh, let's see, six as 12 half hour sessions. How about that? There we go. All right, guys. Well, you're all wonderful. Have a great week. Um, God bless you and keep you and uh, guard you on your path throughout the week and help you learn to trim correctly. Amen. All right. So have a great week. Uh, you're all the best. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. you again, Linda. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you.